we have a strategy and now we can begin we are standing bolder shoulder to shoulder playtime is over playtime is over that you are a champion God is my witness in perfect perfection living my mission and winning See, we are influencers. We have fear, but don't stop. I have the confidence to rise to the top. We are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is, playtime is, playtime is over. All I need is inside. Mission. Yes, I'm on a mission. I'll win. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, listen, I want y'all to repeat after me, okay? Because we're going to make some declarations in here today. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see you say. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see me say, oh, say I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see you say, we are standing bolder, we're shoulder to shoulder, we are standing bolder. Shoulder to shoulder, we are standing bolder. Shoulder to shoulder, playtime is over. Playtime is over. Hey, And now we can begin We are standing bolder Shoulder to shoulder Playtime is over Playtime is over Now you are a champion God is my witness In perfect perfection Living my mission and winning See we are influencers We have fear, but don't stop. I have the confidence to rise to the top. We are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is, playtime is, playtime is over. All I need is inside. Mission. Yes, I'm on a mission. I'll win. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, listen, I want y'all to repeat after me, okay? Because we're going to make some declarations in here today. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see you say. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see me say, oh, say I'm building my legacy. 
p.m. to 2 p.m. for Impact the World Radio, where we get to sit and talk and have dialogue with amazing men and women who are walking in their divine assignment, their unique calling, and they are not apologizing for it. And the guest that I have with me today, oh my God, like <laughs> I am so excited. I woke up in the middle of the night, it was like 1.30 oh in the gosh. morning, and I texted my husband, I was like, I can't sleep, because all oh, the guests that are coming tomorrow are so amazing. We have Nicole Walters, we have Avis Jones, the Weaver, and Arsha Jones in the building today. You're talking about amazing, powerful women who are walking in their gifts, impacting the world, transforming lives, just all over, touching the world with their unique fingerprint. And you guys know how much that means to me. We have a whole ton of people who are here with us on Facebook Live. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to keep shouting you out throughout the show. But the first <laughs> thing I'm going to ask you to do is share this out because when you get some juicy stuff, mm -hmm. you should not be selfish. Mm -hmm. Come on now, share it with somebody. <laughs> Don't just keep it all to yourself. And I think that's the easiest thing that we can do. It's not costing you a dime, so you might as well share it with somebody else and get them some good, good, juicy stuff in their life today. So who is my first guest? Because I'm not going to yip yap the whole time today. Because <laughs> I want the whole hour to go to this first guest. So let me introduce her officially for those of you who have been living under a rock and you don't know who she is. Like, you have to know. Her name is Nicole Walters. And she is a former six-figure corporate executive who woke up every morning. Oh, my God, I can so relate to this feeling stuck in the life that she had built for herself. She used her corporate skills and took to the internet to build a multiple seven-figure business. Woo, girl, Don't rub your shoulder right there for a minute. Showing others how they can build a life that they love. Now, she's not only a successful, thriving entrepreneur, but she's a mom to three amazing, beautiful young girls yes. who are foster kids, which she refers to as the tinies. The tinies. <laughs> the tinies. And she's a wife to her amazing husband, who she calls the hubbin. The hubbin. Right? That's it. <laughs> I mean, that's easy enough. She has had numerous viral videos that have garnered over 30 million views talking about the real life struggles of being a mom. Amen. These videos have been featured on the Today Show, Good Morning America, Entrepreneur, Woman's Day, Forbes, and Disney's news source, Babbel. Every day, Nicole connects with her audience on how to run an online business and live a life that brings them joy. Sister, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am beyond excited to be here. <laughs> oh, I'm beyond excited. To, I told you I couldn't sleep last night. Seriously. Oh my gosh. So for those who don't know who Nicole is, outside of what I just read sure. from your bio, kind of tell people who you are and I guess what your mission is mm -hmm. in life. I mean, you have this infectious energy and infectious smile that we get from the internet. Oh my gosh. Like, that's so crazy that you can feel somebody's <laughs> energy through the internet. But tell us where that comes from and, and how you got started and all that good stuff. Well, what you're seeing is the light of the Lord. <laughs> you know? So I'm, I consider myself blessed. That's um, I, I've had a good life and I'm so yeah. grateful for it. So that's um, 
what you're seeing if, if you're picking up what he's putting down. I but love it. Um, in terms of what I do and what I'm about, I always joke that I'm a functional hot mess. And that's, <laughs> that is how I have built my business is by showing people every single day that you can be a thriving, successful entrepreneur living and working in your purpose. But you know, things don't always come together. Mm -hmm. You have your highs and you have your lows. And I've been blessed since quitting my job live online in front of 10,000 people to uh, now, several years later, having a seven figure business or multi seven, multiple seven figure business, uh, being able to show people the journey that goes along with that. Yeah. And um, that's what's been so, it's been so much fun. I can't even yeah. tell you. It's been amazing to have a community that cheers me on, that supports me, that shows up, that yeah. prays for me, and then also have an opportunity to you know create additional millionaires mm -hmm. and to help people also um, realize their purpose. So yeah. that's what I do every single day, and I get to be home with my babies also. I love that, <laughs> and, I, and I, I think I love one of the things that you said was about your community and your tribe, yeah. because one of the things that we share on the show constantly and through my work and my platforms is that you cannot do it alone, oh, no. and you shouldn't be trying yeah, to do no, it alone. No, I don't want to. It's no, too hard. It's too Absolutely hard. not. Yeah. You absolutely need absolutely. to have a community, as you said, who pray for you, mm -hmm. cheer for you. Mm -hmm. Y'all know, I, I tell you all the time, my mama told me never go where you are tolerated, only go where you are celebrated. That's right. So I go into the tribes and the mm -hmm. spaces where people celebrate my gifts. Mm -hmm. They don't want me to dim down. Now, have sure. you ever experienced that? Because oh, you're a, yeah. br a bold, bright light in the world. <sighs> Thank you so much. So, <laughs> do people ever, have they ever made you feel like, mm, could you dim that down a little bit? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's funny. I was just talking about it on the way here with my assistant that, um, you know, I, I am always very aware of how it is when people first meet me that I can be a lot, you know? And <laughs> one of the things that people aren't sure of is like, is she for real? You know, right. like, is she for real? And the biggest feedback I always get whenever someone meets me is, oh my gosh, you're exactly like you are on the internet. And that. I'm like, well, what else would I be? Right. Like, I'm really that excited about life and all that. And and it's interesting, because I started off, we talked about this earlier, I started off as a uh, blogger mm -hmm. in the natural hair space. And I say this to encourage people who might be listening or people who might have this experience, but when I shifted to uh, launching my own business in the consulting world, which strangely enough isn't that different than what I was doing in corporate. Mm -hmm. um, it's the exact same same work, but a different demographic. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with everyday entrepreneurs instead of multi-billion dollar corporations. But a lot of the people who'd known me online and a lot of the people who'd know me in that world, they definitely were like, well, what are you doing? You're just a blogger. And it's like, you just, you didn't check my LinkedIn, girl. I'm, right. I'm a lot more than just a blogger, you know? And I definitely had do people- Do your research. You do your research. And I definitely had people who were dimming my light, people who were yeah. saying like, well, who, who is she to think she can teach on these subjects? And um, the things that she's saying, you know, how tried and true are they? Right. And does she, and it's like, they're tried and true with multi-billion dollar corporations. Like, yeah. they may sound unfamiliar to you because you're not used to that line of work, but um, in reality, I do know what I'm talking about. And um, I questioned myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I questioned myself myself but pushing forward I look back on those moments three four years ago and where I am now and you know I'm so glad that I never wavered you know because what God had for me was mine yes and you make <laughs> a good point about some of the skill sets that you learn mm -hmm. when you're in the corporate space being mm -hmm. transferable into oh, the entrepreneurial yeah. space oh so much of it yeah. I look at my journey as a legal secretary and I'm like I am not mad that I served in that role yes. for 15 years because I believe that we do what we know mm -hmm. until we're willing to interrupt our norm and do something different that's right, right. but at, when you're in the process of whatever that season is in that mm -hmm. journey Take what you can get from that and All the learn things. it. Everything that I learned in a corporate space as a legal secretary uh -huh. allowed me to learn powerful communication skills. Oh, yes, written to, skills. Yeah, I mean, everything, skills. communication. Look, I tell people, oh, yeah. I'm not an attorney, but honey, I can type up a contract. That's right, right. So absolutely, me, right? absolutely, so, yes. So you learn all of these transferable skills. So for those of you who know that you're in that space where you really want to walk away from your corporate job, right? Maybe you're in a space, and I, I was there before. I was in a space where I, just, I knew I didn't belong there anymore. Mm -hmm. It was time to move. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably stayed a little longer than I should have. Don't we all? Don't right. we all? Like right. the fear, familiarity. But if you are feeling that way and you know there's, you don't have the option of walking away right now, start to create your exit strategy now, but also just tap into what am I learning right now? Oh, yeah. What can I learn for the next 12 months and I'm going to be here for 12 more months mm -hmm. or six months or however long because what I don't encourage people to do is just jump out yes. and do it without a real, some type of strategy or some type of Absolutely, plan. Absolutely, yeah. Because it ain't, it ain't cute being home and being broke. Oh, yeah, it's not. I always <laughs> I always say, you know, uh, you shouldn't look at it as quitting your job. You should look at it as hiring yourself. I and if that. you're going to become your new boss, well, what type of boss do you want to have? 
have? Do you have a boss that who's going to pay you regularly? Do you want a boss who's going to have something for you to do every day? You know, do you want a boss who's going to have work that makes you feel like it's important and that you're actually getting somewhere? Yes, you want that boss. So start being that boss now so that when it comes time to jump ship that you're actually getting hired at a place of employment you want to stay. Hello. <laughs> Yes. What kind of boss do you want to be? I want look. I want to be a boss to pay me. That's right. You know, I'm like I want to get a. And it's honestly a point of pride as an entrepreneur. I've paid myself my same salary and increasing ever since I first quit my I job. Love it. You know, and that is something that is a real point of pride for me because it's hard to pay yourself when you're first getting started. You know, it's not easy. So it's super exciting for me that that was something that I've been able to sustain. And now as I participate in the wider business ecosystem, mm -hmm. now I have other employees that I pay regularly mm -hmm. and I and I have families that I support as a yeah. boss and you know it's just really important to recognize that you want to cultivate a space that that's going to be sustainable. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a powerful thing to know that you can not just transform your own life, mm -hmm. but then you can position yourself to oh, help yeah. transform other people's lives. Oh, yeah. and, and and let's talk about this, because that leads me into another train of thought. I have so much running through I know, my mind. I'm like, I'm like, I, like I can feel it. I'm looking at I'm like, we can literally be here all day. I know. Like, I think we could I actually know. sit here and talk about all the things. We, we haven't even gotten into hair. We haven't talked about eyebrows. We haven't talked about wigs. <laughs> we haven't talked about wigs. food. Like, I mean, there's literally, there are subject matters that we ha will not have time to dive into. I, that's right. I, so we'll have to have you back then. We'll I know, clearly. Sure this is the wing chat. Reason. Guys, you know, I know we talk business, but today. <laughs> now she's throwing me all off track. All right, I know. Let's move to, to the next Sure, thing. sure. Let's talk about clarity in business. Sure. So there are, most of our listening audience and viewing audience through VoxWave.com as well as, mm -hmm. as Facebook Live and people who will listen to the replays are typically women in business. Sure. They're in their core first five to six years of business, uh, but they are, many of them are struggling to connect mm -hmm. all this passion they have and this energy for succeeding with the profit margins sure. that match the passion. Sure. And I believe that when you're serving the world, especially when you're a service-based uh, company such as I am, mm -hmm. that your bank account should be reflective of the level of service that you are delivering in the world. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, you have to tap into the why. So yeah. let's talk about how clarity impacts sometimes women not being able to monetize at the level that they really could. Sure, absolutely. I think that that is probably one of the first things that's important to tackle. Um, a lot of us go out there and we start creating content without actually considering what the problem is that we're looking to solve. Mm -hmm. So you're out there focusing on whether or not your um, your business name is cool or your logo is pretty <laughs> or your, um, your Instagram looks beautiful. And all those things can be valid and helpful and they can boost your business. But in reality, if you aren't clear on what problem you're trying to solve for other other people because people are only paying you for for work yeah so if you're not clear on that then you're not actually you don't have anything to send them to and you can't give them anything to buy mm -hmm. so oftentimes a major disconnect that people have in their profitability is that they're spending all day talking about the problem talking about having a beautiful page creating content <laughs> you know putting all this work out there but you're not sending people you have to give them a place to go to deposit your coins yeah. and and that is the major disconnect so I mean I meet beautiful talented life coaches and fitness professionals and they've built this amazing brand but they don't have a single click to buy or product on their website yeah, and I mean that so um, or they don't have a website you yeah. know and or they're going to amazing speaking engagements but they either haven't contracted or listened to your stuff in order to make sure they're getting paid appropriately yeah. or they don't have anything to sell from the stage yes. so it's like I mean there are just so many opportunities where they're they're missing the connection about coins because they're just so excited to finally live and work in their purpose mm -hmm. and um, I'm a big believer that God wants us to to continue to live and work and serve in the way that he has as outlined for us, which means he also wants us to get paid so we can continue to do that. Yes. And um, and as evidenced by my life, I mean, I am doing exactly what I'm supposed to do, and he is funding that journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I am and I am grateful for it. So yeah, yeah. clarity is really important because it'll make your products be created with intention. Mm -hmm. Your content will actually serve a purpose, and your bank account will collect the commas that you're supposed to collect mm -hmm. because then you're going to have the clarity to continue working in that purpose. I love that. So you have to be mm -hmm. very clear about what solution you're providing mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Now, some women often have a struggle with two things. Number one, niching sure. down yeah. and feeling like, oh, well, if I say I serve this group, then I'm not going to be able to serve this group. Right. Talk about that a little bit. 
little bit, if you will. Sure. Um, and then we'll go to the next, into the next. Sure. One. So that's simple math. I think that oftentimes <laughs> we struggle because we feel like we need all the people because we're getting none of the people. So right. it's like, it's like, oh, I just like, I have all these things and I can't get the visibility. And so that's the problem. And if I could only get more people, you know, everything would be better. But the truth of the matter is you don't need all the people. Right. One of the major shifts that I made in my business was I decided to dive deep instead of going wide, which means let me pour into the community that's arriving that needs what I have to serve and then and, and maximize that. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that's typically done in the corporate realm. So uh, a simple example of that is uh, if you can get a thousand people to give you ninety seven dollars uh, one time during an entire year, you are now a six figure earner. Yeah. And so oftentimes we're sitting here saying, well, I need an email list of a hundred thousand and I need a following. My Instagram needs to be two million and I need to have all these people. But it's like, you know what? You don't. Yeah. If you've got a membership group with a hundred people in it and that's it, you don't add a single person yes. and they're paying you $47 a month, you have now made a recurring product that makes you $5,000 a month. You've yes! replaced your salary. Preach, that is girl, simple <laughs> math. So if you can just focus on finding the 100 people that you can love and serve for an yeah. entire year, month over month, you can actually, and who doesn't have 47 in their budget? Right. Turn down those shoes, you know, right. and invest in yourself. If you just have that simple recurring product, you now have a sustainable business item that more than covers your bills and allows you to grow. I love it. She yeah. is giving you all the juicy, juicy, juicy nuggets. <laughs> And I'm going to share something that I experienced because nobody taught me this. Sure. When I initially came into the entrepreneurial space, I didn't have a coach. I didn't have mentors. I just kind of was at Barnes & Noble reading a whole bunch of books. Of course. Trying to figure this thing out, which is why you need a coach. Yes. I figured that out down the road. Yes. But one of the things that I had gotten into the space of doing was having all of these premium price point items, right? Right. right. So I had people who were like, oh, well, you're Cheryl Wood now. Mm -hmm. You should be charging this. And that's right. why you can't let everybody speak into your life that's and your right. business. That's right, yes. But so I had all these great products, which were, I serve people very well. Mm -hmm. I always over deliver. Mm -hmm. And so I have products that are, you know, 5000 and 10000 and $30,000. Mm -hmm. And I got one or two people, but sure. I'm like, okay, is that sustainable? Right, is this sustainable? And I was leaving what I consider the small money on the table. Yes. But the small money adds up. Absolutely. And you're just like, oh my God, the $47, the $67. Yes. I just launched a speaker development uh, lab and it's a $67 a month program. That's so reasonable. And I did like, in one call, I had like my first 50 or 60 people mm -hmm. in the program. Yes. And you, you add that, you do the math. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's just like passive income consistently coming in. Absolutely. Outside of the other things that I do to generate income. Absolutely. So you guys know, so let's talk about that because mm -hmm. we all know that we need multiple revenue streams coming in our business. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody who's successful is just doing one thing. Oh yeah, no. I mean, the average <clears throat> millionaire brings in five to seven income streams. Y'all So, it? I mean, that is. I don't believe it when I say it. No, so and if, if you hear the people say it, <laughs> right. you know, sometimes they need it from a different No, place. it's like teenagers <laughs> where it's like you'll listen to your friends, but you won't listen to me. You'll listen That's to Google, right. but you want to hear mom. It. That's it. So, no, absolutely. No, it's the truth, though. Um, I, I've got multiple income streams. So obviously, uh, speaking engagement. So yes. I, my speaking engagement is anywhere between fifteen thousand and twenty-five thousand for a forty-five minutes to ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. And then um, for my course revenue, I have a signature course that brings in six weeks long. That brings me in anywhere from one to one point two million a year. Um, I have a private coaching program that brings in anywhere from six hundred thousand to a million a year. Um, I have a membership group that brings in anywhere from one to one point two million a year. Mm -hmm. So the way that I have a multi multiple income streams is because, or the way that I hit multiple seven figures is not by scaling one item and pushing right. it to the brink, because usually you'll have to invest a lot of money and in business that's called your overhead. It gets expensive, because then you're spending more money on Facebook ads, you're spending more money on, on marketing, and yeah. my Facebook ad spend is two, less than $2,000 a year. Yeah. And that's because I spend so much of my time, one, serving and serving well, so that people can tell other people about it. Yep. And then I also make sure that as people are entering into my space, whether it's from something like this, like content, that that all along the way, I'm giving them additional places to invest. And one of the biggest places that we we mess up is kind of what you were talking about in the beginning, where you go from, hey, I've met you via Facebook, or I've met you via broadcast, and now I want to sell you my high ticket item. Right. Now, a simple right. way to illustrate this is, how many Louis Vuitton bags do people buy? They may be able to scrape up the money to buy one, yeah. but you know what? I consider myself the target. How many Target bags do you own? <laughs> so it's like, you know what I mean? Every time you go into Target, you'll buy another bag, <laughs> so you know? True. So it's like, if you wanna go buy your Louis Vuitton with someone else, that's fine, but you're still gonna spend your money with me. Yeah. And and if, especially if you are like, man, I love this bag, you're gonna keep coming back. Yes. And then while you're in the Target, you're gonna buy everything else I have to offer. Yes. So it's like, you know, that person might've gotten, you know, that 15,000, 
$1,000 purchase from you one time, but guess what? I made 30, 40, 50,000 over the long run. And then because I deliver well, you've been able to turn over on that investment. So yes. it's, it's that shift from short money to long money that really makes you have a sustainable business. I love it. I love you. Did I mention that? I, I, knew I love you. you. Like, we can literally talk all day long. She all, the things. all the good all news, the things. all the business strategies. <laughs> Now, now, some people may be watching and may, and, and may be viewing and they may be thinking, well, Cheryl, I'll never. Because sure. some people feel like, you know, right sure. now, they might be working just a, just an a everyday job sure. like I was, you know, just eight years ago. And maybe they're making, you know, 75 or 80,000. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I can't see myself making that kind of money. Sure, sure. Where would you direct them to start? Like, what's a starting point for, let's say someone already has their business. You know, it's a legitimate business, meaning you have your license. Sure, sure. And you have your business name, sure. you know, and you're paying your taxes on it. And you have mm -hmm. your business account. Right, right, right. It's not right. business. Right. It's business. It's a real you business. have a legitimate <laughs> business. But where do they go if they don't have all of these things in place? Like, what are the first few steps sure. that you would encourage someone who says, I have this business, I have the pretty website, mm -hmm. but I'm not generating income. Like where can they just kind of a starting point? Sure. So I think it's really easy for us to get tactical right away, to mm -hmm. always say, oh yeah, well, let's, um, the first place you do is you go here and you set up a website and you do this. And yeah. One of the first things I want to say is if your ma mind is already telling you you can't do it, you've got to tackle that demon first. Yes. And so it's like, you know, I want to move you back to move you forward. Mm. And moving you back is you need to identify where these thoughts are coming from. Are they thoughts from the enemy? Are they thoughts that you created organically? Are they your real truths? You know, these are things you have to ask yourself because they're going to come up over and over and over again. Yeah. And, um, and it's easy for us to ignore the mindset. I think that as women, especially your crew and your tribe, yeah. they're doers. They're like, yeah. listen, I'm trying to get to right. it. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to get my coin and, and change the world. And right. you know, what's great is you start making that progress, but how many of us stall? How many of us get into programs and we lurk and we don't actually do the work? And oh. the truth of the matter is that's not because of you. That's not because of who you are. It's because you haven't spent time to actually tackle the things that are coming up in your mind saying you can't do it. One of which that I talk about pretty openly is imposter syndrome. Yes. Imposter syndrome is essentially the inability to realize your own success and then you know move towards your own greatness it's yeah. a real thing you can read the Wikipedia on it I suffer <laughs> from it I mean every time I launch something I say to myself is this gonna be the time that people are gonna be like they're not gonna I show want up. it is, they're not, gonna, is this gonna be it? the time you know right. like, like even even on here and talking I'm just like gosh I really hope everyone thinks I'm like making sense you know right. what I mean like right. and the thing is you know you, you have the seat at the table because you're in the seat of the table because God saw it fit to put your words out there to impact and yeah. and you can't spend time wondering about whether or not you're worth it because you have work to do yes. you know we have a mission we have a calling and it's really important to sit back I say this first place to start is um, I always tell people to write a letter to themselves and you write that letter to yourself at age 75 85 and you say to yourself what does the world look like now what have I accomplished? Yeah. What what am I known for? You know what what is it that my my children will say about me and that the world will say about me and who, whose lives have I changed? When you write that letter, it it serves as a roadmap. You just reverse and engineer it because then you can ask yourself what needs to be true today to make that my reality mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And once you start seeing that, you realize your intentions not only are pure and kind, but you need to raise that price. You need to charge what you're worth. Mm -hmm. You need to get out there and launch today because you've got a goal to get to. Mm -hmm. So for everyone out there who's still wondering where to start, if you haven't taken time to write out that roadmap, if you haven't taken time to write out you know, your looking glass tool to help you see where to go, that's where you should start. Oh, that was just so powerful. <laughs> I hope you guys are taking notes and everybody's like, teach Nicole. <laughs> yes, I know. Somebody said thrilled. Somebody said what? Thrilled that you two are together. Oh, I, I know. love it's that. Been a long I love time that. Coming. Thank like, you. This was I know. Destined to be. We've been. We were. <laughs> that was the first thing we said. I was like, How do I not know you already? I know. How has I this know. been? I, I know. know. The energy is just like crazy, <laughs> but I love it. And everything that you talked about is just so so true. I love that you start at. The, I mean, at have the you beginning. struggled with it? I'm sure. Like, oh my god. Okay, first of all, I grew up in poverty in sure. the inner city of Baltimore, sure. Maryland, a housing project. Yep. Every day that came out of my house, I saw the worst parts of life. Absolutely. You know, drugs. Drug addiction, people selling mm -hmm, drugs, crime, mm -hmm, violence, mm -hmm. uh, teenage pregnancy. Sure. My dad, uh, he was pretty much not present. He would sure. suffer from alcoholism. Sure. I saw my father go to prison more times than I could count. And I thought in that environment mm -hmm. that I would grow up to be another statistic. Well, that was the norm. I mean, that did you know norm. anyone who was a success? No, did you know anybody who? No exactly. Model. My mom was a model for mm -hmm. work hard, go to work every day, don't yep. ever take a day off, right. grind, grind, Which grind. Which is also a negative business model, too, because yes. that's not how you soar either. Absolutely. But she was doing the best she could with what 
what she knew. That's it. You know? And she didn't she didn't believe in taking a day off and she right. still couldn't put food on the table. Right. Like so she worked and worked and worked and worked. So my goal when I got out of high school in Baltimore was I didn't go for four years of higher learning, higher uh -huh. education. I didn't mm -hmm. go to college. Right. I went straight from the hood, sure. from high school, into the workforce because sure. I wanted to pull my mom out of poverty. Of course. And I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know right. how it was going to happen. I just worked and worked. I followed her model. Right. I worked and right. worked and grinded and grinded. And thankfully, I felt like I was lucky sure. to land a gig as a legal secretary mm -hmm. making $90,000 a year right. with no college right. degree. Right, right. So a part of me that it was like, okay, Cheryl, you this have a is, good thing. Don't ever give it up. Because you ain't sweeping floors. Because I'm not, you're I'm not so lucky, that, right? Like, you're, you're so blessed. Don't ever give yes. it up, you know? Like, and so when I kind And of, people will look at you crazy, too. Like, yes. when I quit my six-figure job, my <laughs> own like, father what? was like... But you have a but well, he's African. You have an office. Right. You have you have business card. You have corner. Your father. You have Your corner father. office. <laughs> you have office where people come to you every day. You have secretary. You have assistant. You can take off Wednesdays. You know. And he's yes. like, How, why are you gonna quit your job? You know. Right. And I'm like, but dad, I have purpose. What's his purpose? Right. You know. Like, I mean, does purpose pay the be, bill? Right. Because right. he's a taxi driver. So yeah. he's like, I don't. He's like, are you kidding me right now? Like, yeah. yeah it's amazing. The, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely went through the imposter syndrome when yeah. I started shifting into the speaker space. Mm -hmm. I had, like, you who know, am I? I tell people I? all the time, I did not feel qualified, right. but there was something in my spirit that said I, I was called to do that. You have to. And you have to go with that and, mm -hmm. and place all bets on you. Yeah. Like, give yourself the opportunity to win big by taking yes. the risk. And it's scary as heck. It's and my so husband scary. thought I lost my mind. Oh, yeah, absolutely. he didn't marry me as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. He married me as a chick who had a job and benefits. Right. And right. now I'm switching up the game. Plan, You're right. Like, okay, so he's like, okay. So but wait, this wait, better wait. work though. Right. Like this better like, work. Wait a minute. You gonna quit your job? Right. That pay you a direct deposit every two weeks. Right. And benefits. Right. And you gonna go talk? And people gonna pay you for that? Right. <laughs> like, no, and it's true. And you feel crazy, but the truth of the matter is that you know, for me as a woman of faith, like that obedience, like I'm more scared to not be obedient than oh, I am to so of good. whatever could happen to me when I take that leap. Say that again. You know. Wait, y'all got y'all. I, like, I know y'all getting that. Let that resonate in your spirit. No, Say it's that the truth. Again. I am more scared to not be obedient to the mm. calling on my life placed on on it by the Lord than to than whatever could happen to me on the other oh side oh you know so yes. I mean and that's the reality of it and it doesn't mean I move without fear it's just I, I move with that fear but I also move with the faith and yes. and at the end of the day how many years have you given to your corporation yes. how many years have you given to the fear yes. how many years have you given to this uh, this thought process that you can't make it what would happen if you gave yourself one year yes. if you just were like I'm gonna <laughs> just for a year believe that I could mm -hmm. if it fails listen how many people out there and I'm sure people on, on you know social media can all say like how many of you guys have um, this is your very first job you've ever worked because if it isn't your first job you ever worked, guess what? You can get another one. Oh my God! What if I told you that if it oh didn't God. work, you might could get another one? You can always, <laughs> you know? always, always. If come you can back always go base. back if you need you to. You can always come back to what you already mm -hmm. know, and that is give what gave, a year. allowed me to give myself permission to leave the corporate That's space. Right. Was that I kept saying, Cheryl, you've done this your whole life. Mm -hmm. You know this like the back of your hand. You can always come back you to can this. Always come but back. what you're not always gonna have is the youth. And that's the vigor, right. and that's the vitality, right. and the energy, and everything else that I need to right. fulfill the calling that's, that's on right. my life. Well, and the season. I mean, one of the things I always tell people about, like, where we are right now is we are in a rare position where we can... I mean, it's like a wild, wild west out there. I mean, <laughs> with social media yeah. and the way things are developing and changing and, and modifying, I mean, people are looking for your story. They're looking for your impact. So They're looking for your opportunity. People are actually out there clamoring. Mm -hmm. And when I think that every single day there's someone out there who's waiting for my story to change their life, yeah. I mean, that gets me out of bed. Yeah, You know, that gets me out of bed. And I and we don't have time to wait, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. And someone will not move until they hear it from you. That's right. They could have heard the same message or That's something right. very similar. That's why you interview times. people. Listen, we're, saying that we're speaking the, the same, same story. Language, but we're it's saying like the same story. Somebody needs to hear from all over. <laughs> right. like, that's why she's here. Somebody's going to need to hear from Amos that's who's right. in a little bit or Arsha uh -huh. and that's why we do this. Different right. wig, different day and all yeah. of a sudden it clicks. You know what I mean? Like I don't know how it works out but that's the ticket. So it's a different wig, a different day. And all that's of a sudden it works, her. you know? You. Yeah, people see you and you always cheesing and smiling. All right, I ever see is your right, pictures right. of teeth. That's all I ever see is teeth. I have, I have my back teeth too. Oh, I have all of them, you know? So, oh my God. So like Honestly, yeah. are you always like, is business just easy for you? And, and so that's why you're always happy. Like, do you ever 
bump into any potholes sure. and challenges because people might think that because they see you know Facebook and social right, media, Instagram, right. it's like the snapshot. It's a highlight right? reel. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So, so talk to us about any challenges that you've ever faced. Sure. Or do you have moments where you're just like, oh, and you got to push yourself? Oh, yeah. No, I'm I'm always afraid. Like, <laughs> I like, I mean, yes, I'm overall, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. I am high energy and smiley. Yeah. Like, it's just, this is my regular face. Like, I'll pose for pictures, like, and then people right. are like, picture's done, and my face is still the same, because that's like the only <laughs> smile I have. You know, it's not like a bigger one for the picture. Right. But the truth of the matter is, I am scared a lot of the time, and I'm nervous, and everything is new. And But that's part of the thrill of entrepreneurship, is every day is unpredictable. And um, But I do have moments where I'm like, is this going to work or not? Just... Um, Oh my gosh, what was it, like a week ago? We just bought a house in Atlanta. So Congratulations. Thank you. Very excited about it. But I mean, I grew up in a one-bedroom apartment sleeping on a couch until I was 12. Mm. Like, I remember waking up with roaches crawling on me. Like, mm. I was, we were broke, broke. And yes. like, so I'm in this house and I'm saying to myself, like, we're doing the inspection and stuff, and I'm just like overwhelmed, you know, just, just flat out overwhelmed by this next chapter in this mm. journey. And, you know, we adopted our three kids from foster care. I so it's know. like... I mean, I feel very obligated to them to, oh, I don't want to get emotional now, but I feel obligated to them to not mess up because they've had it so hard already. Yeah. And so I'm oh, in wow. this house and all I could think to myself was, you know, you're buying this house because business is going really well, but like, what if it doesn't? You know, like, what if it, the what ifs kind of get into your head and then you get really scared, like, what if I can't keep it up? And right. so I feel that way all the time. And right. every time I talk about it, I get scared because yeah. then you're like, people want to see a picture of, perfection right you yes. know like will people still want to invest in you and and be around you you yeah. know and, and learn from you if, if you tell them that you're scared or if you show them that you got pit stains you know <laughs> like I mean like I'm I'm genuinely nervous you yeah. know and the truth of the matter is um, you still have to go forward and do it because uh, the reality is everyone else feels that too and it doesn't serve anybody to not live in your truth mm -hmm. uh, people are not helped if they because what will happen is people that you work with will get into their own moments and they'll think they're the only ones in it yeah and they'll live in this bubble where they feel like why is it so hard for me right. why am I feeling this fear and it's right. like no like you don't understand like Oprah feels fear you yeah. know what I mean like that that is a real thing even though she's been doing it and it's more familiar to her mm -hmm. she can just identify it quickly and then use her tools to fix it faster pause right there you know that's what happens when mm -hmm. you run towards your fears instead of away from them oh yeah you learn what it feels like what it feels you like you learn to get used to that feeling and you're like oh okay now I can identify it mm -hmm. I know what this is that's right it's not my my gut telling me I should that's right this is not my intuition telling me this is that's a bad right. idea it is fear and it doesn't talk stop me you and it doesn't, it doesn't stop, stop you the you same know. way yeah but you have to give yourself permission to feel it yeah. so that you can become familiar and then you can just continue to move and forward. And then you lean in, but it still hurts. It still like, I'm, I'm, it still it hurts. Still hurts. It still I still hurts. have my moments where I'm like paralyzed where I'm like, I'm going to make it and I'm turning to the people that I surround myself with, which is why your tribe is so important. Like, yeah. I will do a launch and then I'll go into my community and on Facebook or, you know, member portal and I'll say, hey guys, like, I was really scared, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I just want to let you know it worked out okay, but I was really scared, and these were the things I was scared of. And then they're like, we're so proud of you for acting through that fear. Thank yeah. you for not faking like everything's okay, you I know? I love that it's level truth, of vulnerability. You know? And it, I think that is works. so needed because sometimes it looks like everything is so glamorous. Yeah, it's not. From the, from the outside, yeah. and it's really not. It's mm -hmm. hard work. It is getting up and showing up whether you feel like it or don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. It's pressing through the fear. It's pressing through those moments mm -hmm. where Maybe someone else has not been so nice to you. Yeah. Maybe because your light is so bright yeah. that it, it makes them feel uncomfortable. It's pressing through all of those things. Mm -hmm. It's pressing through creating the new program and wondering, is anybody right. going to sign up? Is it right. Like, and it's right. like, you know that Absolutely. you've developed credibility, but you still ask yourself the question. Absolutely. Or, or, or no up? one's <laughs> signing up. <laughs> right. You know, and then realizing that, like, I, I can't tell you how many people I say, like, just because no one signed up doesn't necessarily mean that your product or you is the failure. It's let's talk about the launch. Let's talk about your yeah. market. Like, heck, it could be that your your buy now button was broken. It could literally just be code and tech. You know, like it could be that you're in front of the wrong audience. In front of the wrong audience. It, it I mean, be there's so, so many, many variables, other things. Yeah. You know, and so the first thing to attack, I think, because we're so connected to our work, is ourselves. Yeah. We're so quick to be like, I'm the reason it didn't work. That's and so true. and it's just important to not beat ourselves up because like you're gonna be with you a long, long time. You need to be nice <laughs> to you. You know, like as this process goes forward, because yeah. I mean you just can't take those bruisings as you're going you know that's so. great so so then what do you do to pull yourself out of those moments like are you a person like i'm very big on words yeah so in my car i always have somebody that's motivational it's sure. less brown it's you know you guys know lisa nichols is, is yeah, one of my coaches yeah. and i you know i always have a cd or something in my mm -hmm. car or i'm picking up some 
somebody's book and yeah. reading it because I, I believe in the power of words. Absolutely. But what is it that you use to keep yourself on that high energy sure. level? Sure. So I got to say, I mean, I'm a faith girl, so prayer is so important to me. Like, mm -hmm. I can plan and I can organize and I can structure all day, but there's always that thing that's like, what if I didn't? What if I didn't? Yeah. Well, when I know that I've got someone bigger than myself who's still looking out for, for, for me in all ways, who can yeah. see where I'm going 10, 10 years down the road, 100 years down the road, you know, that gives me a calm and a peace mm. that I can't explain. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just one of those things where I know that my steps and the work that I'm doing is so ordained that I, it, it really does balance out some of that fear. It doesn't mean I don't feel it because I'm human, yeah. but, you know, as almost as soon as it arrives, I'm able to turn it over and say, hey, you know, I don't need to have this fear because I know that it, I'm cared for. Yeah. I know that even if this fails, that's part, I just, I pray that I get the lesson out of it so that I can win because you wouldn't bring me this far not for me to win. And so how so. do you know that this is this is the work that you're ordained to do? Like mm -hmm. some people question, right. and I find that some women, they're like, well, and they're, run, they're running sure. from the sure. thing that they're really being called to do. Sure. I ran from my calling for a really long time. I kept sure. shutting it down. Sure. Nobody's gonna listen to me. I'm the girl from the hood sure. with no degree. I can't be on a big stage mm -hmm. talking in front of thousands of people. So how how do you know that this is what you're ordained to do, that this is your gifting? Is it because of the transformation that you create in other people's lives? Like how mm -hmm. do you how do you measure the level of success and yes. how it work. Well, I mean, that's definitely in lives change, right? So um, it definitely has to do with when you see the response, you yeah. know, there's an authenticity there where yeah. you just know and you can't deny it. But there's also the understanding that it, it is a journey, but God isn't the author of confusion. If what you're doing before didn't feel right, then turn away from that. Mm -hmm. You need to turn towards what does feel right. You yeah. know, that that is, this right here isn't gonna lie to me and I gotta be with this all day, you know. Um, also, the discomfort that comes along with the process, it's separating the discomfort of, is it that I'm trying something new or is it that I really hate doing tech? You know, is right. it that I'm trying something new or is it that I have a little bit of stage fear? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like really separating those two things. And then um, the other way is I surround myself with good people, like I can't, emphasize oh, that so enough important. you know like I have I have critical people who will absolutely call me out my husband my assistant my six-year-old she'll I'll come down the stairs she's like are you really gonna wear that or like oh is that a new wig you know I mean she keeps me in check you know what I mean like she's me in check but in reality I surround myself with people who will hold up a mirror and remind me of who I am and mm. say you know you might not feel like that interview went really well because I'll leave out of I'll leave out of here and ask my assistant like I felt like I was a little oh, awkward God, or I felt I'm like I was a little way. like my words were jumbly did I make sense and she'll say it was really good you may have talked a little too long in certain sections but yeah. you're really like I mean she'll tell me the truth so yes. I can improve and yes. you have to have those type of people around you yeah. and um, and if you don't have them you can get them through a mentor you can and get I love them that through because peers. The, the thing is we don't want to show mm -hmm. to other people who are looking at our example and our model we don't want to show them try to show them perfection right it's never right. gonna happen for you you're right for me for Absolutely. anybody who's watching us so I like, I kind of like when I fumble a little bit. I'm like, yeah. well, now they know. I know, it's they real know life. Perfect. Yeah, it's they real know. life. It's just I what it is. I forget, this was, this was what, uh, maybe three months ago, four mm -hmm. months ago, I was in California mm -hmm. with my family. I went to James Malinchek's mm -hmm. speaker money boot camp sure, thing, right? Sure. So I'm there as a student. And because I signed up under his mastermind program, mm -hmm. Um, we all had like 30 seconds to come to the stage and say something, sure. which wasn't planned. I didn't know. Sure. My husband was there with me. He's oh, man. not there. And that wasn't like, anyway, so I get yeah. up to the stage and, and people know me in the room, of right? Course, like, oh, of that's course. Wood. Right. And like, so there's this expectation. Yeah. First pressure. of all, when they say your name, yeah. like, oh, she's not. Sure. And I get up there and, I, and I, I do great. And at the end, I fumble a little bit over my words. <laughs> so I yeah. get back to the table and my husband like, I ain't never heard you fumble before. I know, it's like, but nerves, like nerves it's are a nerves. real thing, you know? Yeah. And it's like Absolutely. the higher you go and the more you soar, the nerves kind of can get the best of you because mm -hmm. there is an expectation yeah, now. Yeah, but it is also the benefit of knowing, like, I pray to always feel nervous because it means that God's carried me to new places. You know yes. what I mean? So, like, I don't ever want to be too comfortable. Yes. You know, like, if I, yes. I pray that, like, someday I'm at the Oscars standing next to Oprah, <laughs> you know, and it. I'm hosting, you know, and giving her whatever Lifetime Achievement Award, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Oprah, my armpits are sweaty. Right. You know, and right. she's just like, girl, you know, <laughs> and I'm yes. like, real talk, didn't think this would happen, so, you know, kind of hype right now. I look really good. Your eyebrows are amazing <laughs> like you know like I like I pray for that to happen because that, that means that I'm I'm growing I love that oh my god you guys 
Oh, let's take a deep breath. I know Good so many things. Oh, we just been, we really, we've been talking for like 35 minutes. We normally take a break, but we don't need no break. We're just going. Because we're going to get the next 15 minutes out of Nicole Walters. <laughs> if you are just joining us, this is the amazing powerhouse Nicole Walters. I just love your energy. I, again, her energy shines through. If you're not following oh, her online, make so sure much. you follow her at NicoleWalters.tv. All right, NicoleWalters.tv. <laughs> we have so many people following us on I Facebook right now. I love this. This is so exciting. Uh, oh, Anita says, I so love both of you. I've been taught by both of you. Thank you. Jay Sharp says, pool partners, truth tellers, accountability partners. Yes. All places. Uh, Dina Wiggins, perfection is a big untruth. You better That's say. That's right. Uh, let's see. Amy Taylor says, surround yourself around good people. Yes. yes. Uh, Rosemary, never get comfortable. Yes. Hey, Lakeisha. Hi, Kelly. Uh, there are a whole bunch. So we'll so go back many and read. Uh, I love oh, that. Oh, Janine Faulkner says, both Nicole and Cheryl have blessed me on many occasions. Oh, Thanks, ladies. Thank so you so much. That means we got to team up and do something. We do. I know. Clearly. Saying, we are, clearly. Well, I'm going to speak that into existence ah, right now. I love it. That we are going to partner on something amazing that is going to blow the world So many away, opportunities. Right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. It. So let's get back into the dialogue. So as I really want to dig a little bit deeper on the whole entrepreneurial space mm -hmm. and succeeding. Sure. So this is a good question. Where where do you or how do you decide where you're going to spend your time? Ooh, well, so um, my, I have a key priority list. This is something I learned from my mentor, Shaleen Johnson, my mm -hmm. friend. Um, my number one priority above anything else is, um, well, God is my number one priority, but my number one life priority is my family. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything is measured around that. Uh, will this hurt, damage, take a, take me away from my family? Mm -hmm. um, and I weigh that out. So, have I not been home for a while? If so, yeah. I'm not I'm, I'm not going to take this speaking gig. Um, I don't care how much it is. I need to see my babies grow. You know. Yes. So, so my kids are my key priority. Uh, when it comes to where I spend my time in my business, um, that is sort of a mathematical formula. Um, you know, my time is worth a certain amount per hour. So, uh, what's the return on investment for that? Mm -hmm. As well as how many people can I help? So, uh, it's why I often encourage people not to. Just just lean on things like high ticket coaching. Um, one, because it's not a sustainable business practice. Yes. It's just a lot of pressure and yes. a lot of time. Yes. Um, and people are making these like six month long programs, year long programs. So you're committing yourself to people for these extended periods of time for these high value amounts and optimizing your time. Like, listen, in a year's time, I'm hoping that I'm going to be in St. Bart's with, you know, Oprah. Like, I don't, I can't commit to you for that long. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> right. I like, if like, so it's I'm the financial commitment and the time commitment. And the time commitment. Yeah. Like, I just, I have things to do. So yeah. So there's that part of it. And then the other side of um, developing your time is that's why you, you can't help as many people. So I'm out here to change as many lives as possible. Yes. And if I'm caught up with all my time wrapped up in like a high ticket coaching thing or just speaking gigs, then I'm not really reaching out to as many people as possible as I could be with having courses and having a membership group. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, like larger speaking gigs and mm -hmm. you know growing in that way. And mm -hmm. so if you want to touch as many people as possible, you need to look at how you're spending your time versus revenue growth as well as impact growth. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Revenue growth and impact growth. You yes. have to consider both. Are there spaces where you are consistent in going and networking? Do you mm -hmm. still network? I network all the time. I network at the Target. Like I'm like I'm like I'm just the worst. Like I talk to strangers. I mean, my whole family I gives me so lectures. I believe you do. I oh my know gosh. You do. I know like you do. I mean, I can tell you, I've sold my course in a bookstore in Boise, Idaho. You know what I mean? Like I'm that person, and it's just yeah. because one, I'm so passionate about what I do, and then two, um, everybody I talk to, I mean, like they just. Everybody has this purpose, and they just people just light up. If you ask, like, I also you do this too. You ask the annoying questions, like where it's like, if I meet someone and they're like, "Hi, my name's so and so," and I'm like, "Oh, what do you do?" and they're like, "Oh, I'm an accountant." I'm like, "Oh, well, are you living and working in your purpose?" <laughs> You know, like, I do like, that like, you love your work. Does oh that give you God. joy? Oh, oh every morning like, when you wake up, does that inspire you? <laughs> you know, and people are just looking at me like, what? And then, like, and then they start thinking about it. Like, I, well, I don't know if I'm living my purpose. Well, what, what makes your heart sing? You yes. know, like, and then, like, before you know it, like, you get into this whole conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of networking, I mean, I network with, you know, like big wigs at events and stuff, like, because yeah. I'm friends with them and things like that. But yeah. then it's also, like, everyday people yeah. because they're, like, the ones that you really want. I just want to know everybody. So, Absolutely. I can't help I'm a talker. That. I'm gonna talk. Yeah, I love the whole heart space. That's mm -hmm. so important. My kids sometimes they get so irritated. With oh me yeah, mom, we'll not out. now. Right, we're like, out at the restaurant, and I'm like talking to the waitress. Yes. Like, well, is this your dream? Yeah. Is this your dream job? Is this also, all you tell me more? Do? Right. And yeah. we're talking, and, and we're engaging. You know it. And even my clients, they know that one of the things I'll ask them when they come to work with me, and, and maybe they need more clarity mm -hmm. before they start speaking, and right. they want to pull out their story. Sure. Is, I'll, I'll listen to what they tell me, and my famous saying is, "Hmm, I hear you." 
but I don't feel you. Yeah, and right, I am right. So honest, right, like I can't right, lie to right. you. I hear you, but that's what you. Listen, but I don't that's feel what you're paying you. for. Yeah. You are not paying for me to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah, like there's you know no what I connection. Mean? If there's no connection with that, it's like what okay, do you think I gotta tell you. Gonna do? You exactly. know what I mean? Like I really exactly. want to see you win, so I'm not yes. gonna sit here and tell you. Try like just um, this morning, I had someone who'd signed up for my high ticket coaching program who'd worked with me in other uh, other facets, and she signed up and she was like, yeah, you know, I. Um, pulled for my 401k for this um, I don't I just quit my job and I don't where the money's coming from and I just and I mean this is a five-figure investment and I sure enough told her I was like refund yes. you know what I mean I was like refund because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be in a headspace where you're gonna be so worried about money you're not actually gonna be profitable yeah. and like I love and care about what you want to do that makes you happy yeah. but you better believe I'm not gonna tell you what you want to hear just so that you know and I mean she of course was like in tears and all yes. that but you know there are other things that I can do to help her out you know Absolutely. where she is I'm the same. You know, way. So I try to do a grow. conference every year, mm -hmm. and sometimes people will want to sign up for the high ticket right. items, and and they, I start to listen, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh, my cable bill just got turned off," and, and they're like, and no, like no, 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 you can't. This you know? is not the answer. You know why? Right. Because first of all, anything that you invest in is going to take time it and is. energy and effort for you to get a return on the investment. Right. Absolutely. So don't you? Can't, I can't have you come into this thing thinking that next month or next week right. you're going to make all this money back right. and you're just going to be okay. You, you may and we hear those stories but yeah. it also <laughs> the pressure, it's not the pressure on me because I'm all in no matter what. Yes. It's the pressure on you that yeah. you can't think clearly if yeah. you're worried so and much about the pressure, pressure of money. Don't, don't right. put the pressure on me <laughs> to make you get the things that you have to work for because right. I can give you all the strategies, the tools, sure. the tips in the world sure. but the reality is if you don't get out and work it, right. it's not going to work. Right, right, so I, right. Don't, don't stress me out because right. I, I got a husband who <laughs> want his time I got three kids. I sure, have clients. Sure. Also. So I have to make sure that to maintain my peace right. and my joy, it is not always just about a check. Some money just ain't good money. You right. just gotta Absolutely. say, no, this is not the right time. Absolutely. Let's come back and work together yep. again. So again, love it. So mm -hmm. so what is do you feel that is the biggest hindrance for women charging what they're really worth? Oh my gosh, it's it's definitely a sense of value. Uh and this isn't just women, it's actually everyone. I yeah. think that we live in a world where we um, we feel like you know things have to be tangible. So it's like I'm paying you for this yes. bottle of water, and if I can't hold it, then it isn't a value, yes. you know. And so who am I to charge for this thing? Um, and then the other side being that if it comes easily to me, I can't put a price tag on it. Mm. And um, that's just not the truth. Mm -hmm. I actively want someone like you. Who wants a chef that struggles to cook? Do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, like it was so hard for me to whip this meal up. I'm glad you paid me for it. Like, no, like I'm hiring oh, you because that. it is easier for you than it is for me, yeah. you know? And yeah. for me, um, one of the things I always talk about with my assistant and with my husband is just the fact that where we are monetarily now and, and income wise, our big thing is um, time. You know what I mean? So yes. I will actually pay to, to not be stressed out. So like flying in first class, that's because I want to be the first on the plane. I want to be the first, first off, off the plane. Yep. Um, it's because I want to be able to, I'm going to arrive at the airport at the last minute because I work until the last minute. Yes. And so I want to be able to go through all the lines, yep. get right on this plane and get and And then I want to be able to get do all these things fast so I can get home fast, so yes. I can put dinner on the table. <laughs> and I don't care what the price is for that because I can buy just about anything, but yes. what I can't buy is more time. time. You know, yes. so I mean, that is the type of thing that where if you aren't in that place yet financially, you may not understand yeah. the value for some of the people who are buy, paying you, but people who are paying you for coaching are paying you because they're trying to get a time edge, not necessarily a value edge. And yes. and that's the part that you have to release. And also, um, when I say this to my kids all the time, you have to decide from your offers and not your opportunities. So we're often, we often turn things down because we're like, well, I don't know if someone, I don't even want to apply to that job because I don't know if I'm qualified. Apply mm -hmm. and let the person who's the professional assessing it determine if you're the right fit. Yes. Let them say no, but don't say no before they get a chance. Yes. You know, you're already sitting in the no if you never apply. Absolutely. So it's like, put your stuff out there and let people reject it so yeah. that you can make it better yeah. instead of sitting here saying it's already rejected because you never actually launched. I love it. Just good stuff. I, mm -hmm. I always encourage every client, say yes more than you say no. Oh, yeah. Because as soon as you say no, it becomes somebody else's opportunity to walk into their next. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting there with an attitude Rolling right, your eyes like why didn't it happen? Or I had that idea, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, and, and sometimes you are not going to feel qualified. Yeah. You literally are just going to feel like, you know what? I got to do this anyway and prove to myself. I've done that so many times. I will never forget. Mm -hmm. I had this speaking engagement with Mickey Taylor. Uh, mm -hmm. She's the editor at large of Essence Magazine, mm -hmm. and she was on the roster. Sharia Jackson, sure. who's a lifestyle uh, relationship expert at Essence Magazine, and um, oh, what's the other lady's name? Um, Oh, I can't think of her name. Anyway, mm -hmm. she's a White House correspondent. Mm -hmm. And then there was little old me. So there were four speakers, right? And that's how sure, I felt at the time, sure. little old me. And I remember how excited I was when I first got the opportunity. 
and then how deflated I became within 60 seconds because I was talking myself out of my own value sure, of being on that sure, platform. Sure. Like, well, what do I bring to the table? Right. Air at Essence and right. White House right. correspondent and sure. this and that, right? And I remember calling my assistant on the phone, and my assistant lives in Jersey, and I was like, Nika, I was like, they told me I can have a table and bring books, bring yeah. my books, but I'm not bringing any of my books, because I'm don't. i not gonna sit there at the table and look stupid with nobody at my oh, table. This is what man. I said out of my oh, mouth. Man. Like, you talking about the power of yeah, the tongue, yeah. right? And I was like, I'm not bringing any of my books, because I'm not gonna sit there and look stupid. They're not coming to see me, they're coming to see Mickey Taylor, oh. right? So I'm deflating the opportunity, I deflating know. myself yeah, and my yeah. value. And as soon as I hung up the phone, I'm telling you, it was like I heard God in my ear mm -hmm. saying, Cheryl, Cut I've this out, already you told know? you and shown you that you are enough. That's right. When are you going to believe it? That's right. And I was like, uh oh, oh snap. I'm in right? trouble. Girl, Dad I put is every, yelling at me. every book, like... <laughs> every CD, everything I had to sell, I right. put in my suitcase. Right. And I went up to New York City. Yep. And I remember when I went in, I just said, Cheryl, just be you. Don't try right. to be anybody That's all you else. Have to be. Just it's be enough. the authentic you. Yeah. I had 18 minutes on stage. There were about 300 or so women in the room. And the blessing yes. in saying yes, despite the fear, despite that you know right. feeling I had in my right. spirit of, oh, am I good enough, was I just got to be me. I mm -hmm. did that. Mickey Taylor was sitting on the front row, sure. so she got to hear and experience uh, my engagement right. with the audience. That's right. I knocked it out of the park. Of course you did. I got a standing ovation. <laughs> so look, so then we break. Mm -hmm. So I speak, we break, and then they're going to have us come back sure, and Mickey Taylor's going to sure. speak. So I'm talking to people, I'm talking to people, and somebody comes and taps me on the show, Miss Wood, Miss Wood, you need to come out to the lobby. You have a line wrapped around. Amen. I How wonderful is that? Woo! Yes. Because it was just such a moment. It's the reality. It was such a moment it's the reality, that though. you got to stop devaluing who you are. Absolutely. Like God has already equipped you. You are fearfully yes. and wonderfully made. You yes. have everything that it takes. And you don't have to compare yourself to anybody else. That's right. And what they have going on. Because there is right. something so amazing and unique and special about you that nobody can touch that. Absolutely. I think that we get caught up in comparison all the we time. Do. Where we're always measuring our success to someone else's success. Yes. But I can't focus on someone else's destination when they don't they haven't been on the same journey as Absolutely. I have. And when and the saddest part is when we start measuring ourselves based on like earthly things, you know, where we're saying, oh, well, I really want to be where Cheryl is. Well, I can't be where you are because I don't, if I focus on just being where you are, oh my gosh, could I be missing Mark on where I'm supposed to go? Yes. I mean, so it's one of those things where you get to those opportunities and you just, you slay them. Mm -hmm. You slay and yeah, you deliver. You, them. you know yeah. what I mean? You show them you just be your best self yeah. because the thing that's going to happen, like, I mean, you know this as a speaker. I book a lot of my gigs off my last gig. Right. Like someone in that audience will tell someone else yes. about something else and before you know it, you're booked someplace else. That's so, right. I mean, you have to show up to each opportunity as your best self. Your and best. it doesn't mean I don't have freak outs. It doesn't mean that I'm like, <laughs> I mean, speaker nightmares. I mean, we could right. probably go on all day. You yes. get there, it's like none of the tech. We, we aren't going to use your deck. We don't have a table. We don't have a mic. Yes. We don't have a, I yes. mean, all yes. the things can and will go that, wrong. That's it. And the key is to know that no matter what, you will still excel. Yes. You will still excel and you will still connect with the people that need you. And and, and but it doesn't mean that those story those lies don't come in our head That's and those truths right. don't happen. You still got to show up, and I think your story illustrates that yeah. beautifully. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you're right. We could sit here and, sh and swap stories. I know all day. All day. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> okay, so who have been some of your mentors and your coaches who have helped you to get to this place? Did sure. I ask you that question already? I don't no, think no, I no, did. no. Okay, good. So um, I have been really blessed to meet a lot of great people just in this space online, as well as in the um, in real world. Like I bumped into people in like elevators and <laughs> stuff like that. It's just you posted thing. something the other day. Yeah. You were somewhere and, and you were you bumped into yeah, somebody. Steve Wozniak. Yes. Like he was, he was walking his three dogs. He, he's the uh, the co-founder of Apple with Steve Jobs. Right. Like that's like I have like listen. My favor is set up like sometimes I'm like God, like please, like somebody's out there getting a ticket for a red light night right now. I don't need it. Just go I ahead and get go ahead it. because like it. crazy. Yeah. So like I mean yeah, just like walking out of my hotel lobby, Steve Wozniak is there walking his three poodles, and of course I'm looking at his dogs, not him. Right. You know, and then I'm like oh, you know this is crazy. Hey, you know hey. like weird, <laughs> randomest thing. But yeah. Um, so one of my best, like now, like family, Shalene Johnson, she is the uh, uh, New York Times bestseller and she also is the uh, creator of, if you've ever seen like Beach Body Workouts mm -hmm. and yes. Turbo Jam and Turbo Fire, she's a creator of all of those, but she's also a huge entrepreneur. I mean like books and motivation and all that stuff and she is, uh, she met me 
get this, because people are always like, how'd you get that mentor? How did you, Nicole, how yeah. did you meet that person? And um, the truth of the matter is I was out serving. She saw me live on uh, Periscope at the time, and she was like, you are so good at this, and mm. you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And she reaches out to me, and she's like, I would love to work with you. Wow. And so for those people who are sitting back saying that they don't want to start, understand that you have to start. Like, people don't know about you if they can't find you. That's it. You know, so like getting out there, that was part of it. The fact that I was even out there was how she was able to find me, and she led me on a path, and she's just been so generous and I've met so many of her peers and um, Amy Porterfield is a good friend of mine who I also consider a mentor and she does like webinars yeah, and things like that. Yeah, and, I follow her work. Yeah, she's amazing and Pat Flynn, he's into like affiliate stuff, he's awesome, a really good friend of mine and um, Seth Godin, who's a thought yes, leader. Yes. Um, I met Seth in an elevator in Boise, Idaho, wow. you know, and um, I think yeah. I heard him speak at a, where was that? Infusion Soft. Yeah, he's, yep, he's amazing and yeah. he's brilliant. I mean, like, mind blowingly, explosively brilliant and well, like, he has something like nine New York Times bestsellers. I, mean, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and I met him in an elevator, and the first thing I said to Seth was, I didn't recognize him, first of all, because I'm a hot mess. I walk in this elevator and, and, he, and I'm like, oh, hi, just because I'm, I say hi to everyone. Yes. And he's like, oh, hey, Nicole Walters. And I was like, Oh, you know who I am? Because I'm feeling fancy at this one, kind of feeling myself. I'm in Idaho, so like, okay, you know. And so then he's like, yeah, you're one of the speakers. And I was like, oh, I sure am. Are you here for the conference too? And he's like, yep, I sure am. And I was like, oh, that's great. And I was like, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm a speaker and I do things like that. I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, so... Um, you, and I was like, well, you know, a free business tip. If you were to exfoliate, I'm pretty sure your business would thrive. So I'm just throwing that out there. I think you look really great and everything, but I think your business might be better if you exfoliated. Not saying your skin's bad, but just oh, up level, up level. God. It's like 2017, we got to up level. And he's cracking up, oh, I and love I don't it. even realize who I'm talking to. We hit the ground floor. I don't even realize who I'm talking to. We hit the ground floor. As soon as we come out, um, as soon as we come out, everybody who's like waiting for us because we're going to a speaker's dinner, yeah. just me and him, we're like cracking up. I'm like, hi. And I'm just saying, I just made a friend, like right. regular. They're like, Seth. And I'm like, and I'm wow. like, and, and and of course, he's like, you know, you didn't know, you didn't know. And I'm like, I was just sorry, I'm, I'm regular. <laughs> I just didn't even, you But know. I think that makes you so much more But we became friends, well and now too. we're friends, and he's awesome. And he's yeah. like, the, I mean, he is just, I'm like, he's just a godsend to me. Like, he's a blessing. And so, so be in a position awesome. to receive those blessings. That's Get out there and so do the work. Awesome. So, so then what would you say is, would you give a strategy for someone who is watching and they say, you know, I want to connect with a Nicole Walters. I want to sure. connect with that person. Like, how do you get on someone's radar? Sure. Um, like, really, like, if you're really, someone, really. first yep. of all, you guys know that I always preach and teach, like, stop coming in like this, asking for what you can get with your hand out. That's oh, yeah, number one, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. But, like, realistically, mm -hmm. how could someone get on the radar of someone that maybe is someone that you're looking to as a mentor or sure. someone to support them? One of the first things I always tell people is if you really want to work with a mentor, if you really want to work with someone in particular, um, you'll know how good they are based on how much they already share. So you shouldn't want to work with someone that, that does, keeps all their secrets to themselves because you're mm -hmm. not going to get much out of it. Yeah. So that means that your mentor probably already is putting out their answers somewhere. Follow them on social media. Consume their content. There's nothing worse than when people email me and they're like, hey, Nicole, I would love for you to mentor me. I don't really know what you do or where you're from, but, you know, I just, I saw your, your viral video. I read an article about you on Forbes, and I just, I'm emailing you to say you should mentor me for free. <laughs> well, it's like, if you know anything about, if you even did just, like, a swift Google, yep, yep, you would know that, like, first things first, I don't do free. Yeah. Like, I do free for children, I do free for charity, yep. and I do free for church. Yep. That's it. Yeah. So, like, um, if you email me saying I want free, it means that you aren't, you aren't even familiar with my brand. Yeah. You know, like, I, my Ooh. brand that's is based good. on profitability, um, actionable task, and real strategies. Mm -hmm. So, so there's that, right? And there's that <laughs> yeah, part. There's that there's part. There's that part. <laughs> and then the other part is start engaging with their content. There is no one I will give to to my last dollar for the people who have already done the work. Yeah. So when I have people in my community that have you know signed up for my course and actually implemented the work, then they come back and they say, Hey, Nicole, this is what I've built. And that doesn't necessarily mean. I've made millions of dollars, but they're like, I've implemented, this is what I've built, and either yeah. I'm stuck, or I want to go to the next level, or I'm just really proud of this, and I want to say thank you. I'm like, let me tell you everyone about you. Let me blast you on the internet. Let me, like, I mean, I want to to blow you up because it's like your work deserves to be rewarded Absolutely. and excited. So engage in their product. Go out there and find out their information because then you can have a conversation on a professional level that's mm -hmm. actually going to intrigue them and make them want to help you. Great. That's, that's I mean, that's, that's your starting point right mm -hmm. there. Follow their work. I, I'm big on retweeting and reposting Absolutely. and making sure I share their information. 
Um, and I never come in with my hand out. I always come in from a space of service. How can yeah. I serve you? How can, How can I, I collaborate? support you? I know yeah, you have a like book that. coming out, or, right? It might be something like that. Can I do a book signing for you here in the DC area? Sure, you know, sure. whatever it is that I can do to help serve and support is the thing that I always use mm -hmm. as um, a, a tool to leverage Absolutely. to be able to build relationships because nobody sure. wants to be in a relationship and you just come in and ask them, what can you give me what can right. you give me especially when, and when they want it for free Absolutely, <laughs> especially a, that I think we might have a caller All right. I didn't know you guys take callers We do This or is even, so official look, A lot of times though people think they're calling they're listening and they're calling they're calling they don't really have a question but ah! Hello, you are on the show Impact the World Radio with Cheryl Wood and the amazing Nicole Walters You have a question? Comment? Do you even know that you're online on the air? <laughs> they have no idea that they're I on know. the air. I know. I was going to say, how cool is so that, guys, though? If you do want to say hello to Nicole in our last like five or six minutes here, you can dial 240-719-2560. Let me give it to you again. 240-719-2560. If you want to say hi. That's Nicole. so cool. Can I just say how it's, this is so cool. Are you serious right now? I'm like really hype about this. I didn't even know this was a thing. I didn't know. I did it's not know. Yes. Somebody has to call in. Like, you, like just, somebody has to you call have in. to, somebody Here's has to call. Again. Hey, hey, Joan. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Anita. Somebody post this in the, in the group. 240-719-2560. Who's going to call in? Come on, you got like five, you have five minutes. Okay, so we'll keep the conversation going until somebody calls in. So you have four tips for people. Oh, ah, sorry, ah, okay. Oh, ah, oh my gosh. You shall receive. Let's see. This is so exciting. Hello, yes. welcome to Impact the World Radio. Your own Cheryl Wood and Nicole Walters. Oh, you shall receive. Let's see. Hello. Hello. They listen to the show. Can you hear us? Hello. 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 You have to mute the show so we can hear you. Hi. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. And we're going to say it again. A lot of people posting it, but ain't nobody picking up the phone calling. 240-719-2560. We want you to have a question or a comment or something that you want to say to Nicole Walters. Who is going to be the courageous person that's going to pick up the phone? And you have to mute yourself so that that way we can hear you. You can't watch the show at the Come same on, time Come and on. listen to yourself. We're waiting on the call. Because that's the coolest. The All right, we're going to try oh it again. Goodness. We'll try it again. Hello, and welcome to Impact the World Radio. Your own Cheryl Wood and Nicole Walters. Hi, I'm so happy on this. Yay! is Serena Ali. <laughs> All right, tell this us, is so tell cool. Us, tell us who you are and what your if you have a business, what your business is. Hello, I'm Serena Ali of Serena Ali Therapeutic Services, and I'm Serena, actually a YCE member with Nicole. Hello. Okay. <laughs> She's dropping mics. I'm so excited. That's what she does, though. You know, worldwide, she drops mics. <laughs> <laughs> so glad to call in and actually Cheryl's coming to my job next week wow. so we're really excited about that. Oh, yes, I'll be the keynote speaker next week. That's awesome! Oh my gosh, hello! I'm so glad you called in. How are you? What are you doing today? I'm sorry, I mean, I am doing well. I'm at work so that's why I'm whispering but I saw you on the feed and I was like, oh my gosh, I got a call in so it's nice to talk to you in person. Nice to talk to you. I hope you have a good And Cheryl, day. it's so nice. I'll yeah, see you next week. I know, just week. throw me in there too. And I know, Cheryl. yes, oh, yeah, also, yes. Cheryl. I know, it's just See her later. <laughs> I get it. This is no, it's so exciting. Oh my gosh. Have a good day at work. It's All right. lunch time. Okay. Enjoy bye your bye. lunch. Bye bye. Eat a piece of lettuce for me. All right. Okay, bye. bye. So this has been, I mean, just phenomenal. Like I just you have would you come back? Of course. Okay. I, now. now that I know that people can call in, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> this is like my new favorite thing. Call. All right, we have another caller. Hello, welcome to Impact the World Radio. You're on Cheryl Wood and Nicole Walters. Who is Hi, it? Rich Friends. Hey, Rich Friends. How are you? <laughs> Hi. I am awesome. This is Monica Wisdom Tyson. I am so Monica, excited. Monica, I love you. Hi, Monica. How are you? <laughs> hey, Monica. <laughs> This is like technology blows my mind. I'm like, hi, Monica. How are you? What are you doing right now? How are you? I am listening. Let me tell you what. I have to say, I'm so proud to see you two Baltimore girls. Yes! yes! <laughs> I love it! The girl from St. Louis is so inspired oh, by Baltimore. Oh, I love so you. So many levels. Yes. Oh, that's So awesome. I just want to tell everybody, Nicole Walters is the absolute truth. She has changed you. my life in so many ways. She's younger than me, but I consider her my big sister. Oh, my gosh. I and love you. 
I have to say that um, she's speaking everything she's saying, she actually does. I so she's it. the absolute truth on so many levels. Because you can't lie to God, right? Amen. Oh. Don't make me cry, though, because I put on my lashes today, and we're on, okay, we're okay, on okay, the TV, okay, and okay. I want to be messed stop, up. Stop, stop, stop. So don't do that. <laughs> but if you're not following Nicole or Cheryl, please. I follow both of them, I, and Nicole is my mentor. And I'm telling you, she has, oh she has really helped me change my mind about who I am. So I just say that. And I'll keep it moving. Thank you Aww, so thank much. You so I love much you, for Monica. I love you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay. Definitely. So, so of course, everybody Bye. nails on Facebook like, I'm trying to get through. I'm trying to call. Oh, I'm trying to call. We should have said that way early in the show. I know. But we would have never gotten through. We never would have gotten through an interview. Bye, Monica. I love you. Bye. So okay. thank you guys so much for calling in. We really appreciate it. And there's another call. <laughs> so we're going to take this last call. And okay. then we got to, because we got some other guests coming into the studio. Okay. So let's see. Who is on the line with us? Hello. Welcome to Impact the World Radio. Hello, my name is Kimberly, and I love you, ladies. You guys Hi, Kimberly. Are just Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I'm a minister. Yes. And my thing is, um, I'm trying to start something called ICU Warriors. Okay. And, uh, but I feel like I'm selling God. I, I don't want to mm. sell God. Does that make sense to you? Sure. Yes. That's the struggle. And so I'm trying to find out how do I, how do I get this, this started? without feeling like I'm guilty because they're, um, it's knowing your identity, uh, critically caring for other people, and then uh, understanding yourself and others. And those are the pretty much values that the Bible teach. And I just don't want to, I need money, but I don't want to feel like I'm selling God. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So you want to respond to that? Yeah, sure. So one of the first things I'd want you to know, Kimberly, is that, um, you know as well as I do that God wants you to be able to spread this message and that money yeah, is something yeah money is an earthly thing right it's just an exchange mm -hmm. there's tons of it it's abundant it's everywhere and we're entitled to have as much of it as God's willing to bring to us right <laughs> okay. so, okay. so it's the truth it's yeah. the absolute truth and it is I agree and you know as well as I do that we had to be sold on Jesus. We didn't come out of the womb knowing him, right? Someone had to right. talk to us and explain it to us. And exactly. if someone told you that they were going to pay you to have that relationship with him, what price, what check wouldn't you cut? You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like what you are giving to people has such a value that the monetary amount that you could even put on it isn't even going mm -hmm. to be enough, which is why you should charge for it. And also because he wants to be able to fund your ventures. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be able to go new places. He's exchanging what you're doing mm -hmm. right now for monetary funds so that you can actually do things here on this earth, right? Exchanging in regular people, normal human dollars, so you can go mm -hmm. to places that he has for you. And also keep okay. in mind that shifting your brain from it being that people are paying you for God to people are making a commitment fee for your time. So they're committing themselves oh. to the process with you. That's what they're paying okay. for. They're paying for the tools. They're paying for the technology. They're paying for the software. They're paying to be committed to the process so that they don't quit. It's why we pay for a gym membership. So we actually show up. You know what I mean? But understand that what you're giving them is of such massive value to their life, to their world, and to their purpose that there literally isn't a price that could have even been fair enough. So go ahead and put wow. that price sticker on it and get out there and give it to them. All right. Thank you. Thank, oh my you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Thank you for calling in. I'm so excited that <laughs> I got to too. meet you. I don't know if you're here on Me the too. internet or if you're here. Hello. I'm looking at both of you on Facebook Live. <laughs> Just love you, love you. Love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. That was, right. that was a very thank robust you. question and a very robust response, and thank you so much. We are out of time, unfortunately. Oh, we, I would love to chat with you for the next hour, but we yes. have two other amazing guests who are mm -hmm. coming into the studio. So let's close out with this, and, and you got to give me like kind of your quick answers. Okay, sure. Fast In answers. order to create a seven-figure business, you must start <laughs> <laughs> uh, to get out of your own way requires oh strength and perseverance. And the true definition of success is lives impacted and lives changed. I love you. I love you. Now, will you commit on air in front of everybody who's here and here <laughs> that we will collaborate on something? Sure. <laughs> I don't know what my schedule looks so like. So you got, it don't have to be tomorrow. I was okay. going to say, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm like, saying yes. Are you going to say yes? I, uh, yes, I'll say yes. Mm -hmm. We can collaborate on something. Right yes, I it's a yes. I will collaborate. pull up this YouTube. You will so fast. Will I know. YouTube, this is what you got to do. I will send it to your assistant and I will clip just that 
that one part where she said yes. We can find, I know, I, there's so many ways to collaborate that I'm certain we'll find something. We'll find something, I love you it. guys. Thank you for having so me. Amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Everybody's like, you guys are so much fun. What took y'all so long to get together? I know. Blah, blah, blah. This blessed well, me. Look, this blessed Thank me as you. well. Thank you. I love your work. I love everything you're doing. How do people connect with you on social media and if they want to work with you? Yes, if you want to meet me and talk more, head over to NicoleWalters.tv. That's it. And That's on social it. media? Oh, at Natural Nicole. N-A-P-T-U-R-A-L Nicole. All right, you guys got that. We'll make sure we post it as well in the feed. Someone, if you would put that in the feed, that would be fantastic. Next, coming up, is the amazing Avis Jones DeWeaver. You've seen her on CNN. You've seen it everywhere, Brilliant. right? Brilliant, Brilliant woman. amazing woman who is advocating for women of color, moving forward, being leaders, like making their unique mark in the world and getting the same opportunities that anybody else gets. And then right behind her, we're going to have Arsha Jones, who you guys know, she, you know she does the mumbo sauce, right? The oh, yes. mumbo sauce. She's going to be here. So we're going to a break. We'll be right back. We have powerful words, we have powerful minds, we use our voices and freedom takes flight, and we're ready to work, we're ready to win, we have a strategy and now we can begin, we are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder, playtime is over. Time is over. Now you are a champion. God is my witness. In perfect perfection, living my mission and winning. See, we are influencers. We have fear, but don't stop. I have the confidence to rise to the top. We are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is, playtime is, playtime is over. All I need is inside of me. I am enough and now I see. Yeah. I will reach my destiny. Yeah. I don't need your permission. Yes, I'm on a mission. I'll win. Now listen, I want y'all to repeat after me, okay? Because we're going to make some declarations in here today. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see you say. Yeah. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see say. Standing bolder, we're shoulder to shoulder. We are standing bolder, we're shoulder to shoulder. We are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is over. Champion, God is my witness. 
imperfect perfection, living my mission and winning. See, we are influencers. Y'all know that song gets me going every time. I've got to give a huge shout out to Tammy Turner, who wrote, produced, and performed that song at the fourth annual Playtime is Over Women's Business Conference, and she's phenomenal. We have adopted that as our anthem for this station. Because Playtime is over, y'all. you got to get out into the world and share your unique gift and stop letting fear and doubt and self-limiting beliefs hold you back. Before we move on with our next amazing guest, I can't believe, like, I've just got goosebumps all over for all these ladies that are in the studio live today. But we've got to thank the ladies who have partnered with us who help us to make this radio show possible. So our platinum sponsor, Cherie M. Good, who is the founder of Total Harmony Enterprises and the 8th Annual Health Wellness Recharge Health Wellness and Fitness Expo. Uh, she's having her expo. This is her 8th. Can you believe? 8 years of serving the community. No cost. Anyone can come out and be a part of this amazing conference where you get uh, samples of free uh, food, healthy, healthy foods. You get to do workouts. You get to bring your family. She has the Colgate bus that pulls up and gives free dental screenings for kids. It is amazing. You want to be in the space. It's Saturday, April 14th from 10 to 3 in Pikesville, Maryland. Recharge now, 2018.eventbrite.com. And then Ladreen Peterson, who is uh, the founder and creative career strategist for Do It Delivers. She's passionate about inspiring and helping others to optimize and implement ideas, fulfill dreams, and achieve their personal and professional goals. She's actually also hosting an event, which is the Speak Life Youth Vision Party, Youth Vision Board Party, which I love. It's for ages, kids ages 10 to 16. And that's March 10th, that's this coming Saturday at 12 p.m. If you go to Speak Life VBPPY, no, VBPP Youth Edition .com. Let me say that again. Speak Life V B for Vision Board Party P P Y. I want to keep saying P Y V B P P Youth Edition dot com. Look, next time make that easier for me, Ladrine. <laughs> Somebody tell them I'm talking about her link. All right, make sure you check it out. My daughter, who's 14 years old, has the privilege of being one of the keynote speakers this Saturday. I'm so excited that she gets to share her journey of writing her two books and helping other kids to share their message in writing. And then our gold sponsor is Amina McWhorter, who is the founder of the 501c3 nonprofit organization Love by the Handles, which helps individuals who are in transition within the Washington, D.C. metro area. They provide gifts and financial support. And she's also hosting an event on April 5th. It is the Love by the Handles' first benefit gala, and it's going to be dinner, a DJ, silent auction, and it is for celebrating five years of service to the community through Love by the Handles. You can go to lovebythehandles.org and check that out. And last but not least, Ms. Robin Rogers, who is a lifestyle and image expert, helping women to develop greater self-confidence and reflect that confidence through their inner and their outer image. And she's also prepping for an amazing event. These women are just knocking it out of the park and serving the world with their gifts. I love it. And this is called the Whole Woman Symposium on September 8th from 10 to 5. You can check it out at the WWB. 2018.eventbrite.com. So thank you guys, because without you, we could not have this show running on the air. Thank you so much. So now we're going to jump in, because I want to get all the juicy, juicy I can get from this amazing young lady who's sitting next to me, Dr. Avis Jones DeWeaver. She's a media commentator, an international speaker, an award-winning author of the book, How Exceptional Black Women Lead, and creator of the Master the Media Summit. She specializes in helping women of color make the transition from hidden figure to industry leader, which I love that, by teaching clients how to improve their expert positioning through acquiring and mastering media appearances, publishing on major platforms, and monetizing their expertise by speaking on elite stages. Welcome. Welcome to me. I am I'm so honored to, to have you sitting next to me, this woman who is just all over the world, making Aww. truly making impact. Like, I love your work. I love your work, too. I it's am, truly my honor to be sitting beside you, oh, girl. Thank, thank you. you for the invitation. So look, talk about what your mission is and what your work is really all about for the people who perhaps this is their first time hearing about, uh, they had to be living under a rock if they don't know you, <laughs> but if they haven't, uh, what Dr. A uh, Avis is all about in your sure. mission. So, you know, my passion is making sure that the brilliance of black women is no longer sort of uh, sort of undercover. Mm -hmm. You know, it is no secret that we have always been amazing contributors, and I would argue that we are born leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, we have really changed the world in numerous ways, but oftentimes we don't get credit for the work that we do. Yes. We remain these hidden figures, yes. and though I love that movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think it's time that we take credit for the work that we do and take yeah. center stage and really let the world know of our brilliance in a bigger and bolder way. And so what do you think have been some of the um, inhibitors of women being acknowledged for what they do? What have been some of those challenges 
that cause us not to get the credit that we're, we're due? It's a great question. I think they're both internal and external channels, yeah. right? Externally, obviously, we still live in a very patriarchal culture. We also live in a culture that I believe is infused with institutionalized racism. Mm. And as black women, we have those intersecting challenges uh, that oftentimes uh, don't center us and our contributions to the world, right? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, we sometimes have internal challenges, right? Yes. Where we have a sort of tradition, I believe, of being modest, of being humble, <laughs> of just doing the work. Yeah. I mean, black women, we know how to work. Yes, we don't work. we? <laughs> we do. We know how to work. So we just get in there and do what has to be done. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes in working, 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 if we don't understand how to tactfully position ourselves so that our work is uh, connected to us, so there's a straight line between us and our contributions. Yes. Oftentimes, other people will sort of take center stage and take credit for the work that we do, right? Mm -hmm. And reap the benefits as a result of that. Right. And so I'm really interested in helping black women understand how to better sort of leverage the power of their work in a way such that they ultimately get credit for all of the time, effort, brilliance, uh, and sacrifices that they made in order to make the contributions and produce the outcomes that we produce on a regular basis. That's so powerful. And so when you talk about the internal, what yeah. are some of the internal, that internal mess that we deal with or that you, some perhaps some of yeah. your clients deal with? Absolutely. Um, Nicole and I were just talking about some of the fears and self-limiting beliefs. And, you know, I was at a conference actually yesterday, Betty Hines hosted it, and it was with some powerhouse women. Uh, Avis Yates River was mm -hmm. there, Rivers. Uh, Phyllis New Newhouse was there, Betty Hines, uh, Nicole Parker, mm -hmm. Uh, just really successful women, but the conversation still came up about women walking into the room knowing that they belong yes. and how there's sometimes a disconnect between what we're thinking and feeling right. and why we're not taking a seat at the table. So talk about some of the internal stuff that we need to move beyond and how maybe one or two steps of how do we start to push past that so that we can be recognized and acknowledged for our Absolutely. contribution. Absolutely. So, you know, academics would call this imposter syndrome, right? Yes. Uh, this belief that sometimes when we are in the room that maybe in the back of our heads we're telling ourselves, this little voice is telling ourselves we don't belong there. Mm -hmm. Because it's so rare that we see a reflection of ourselves in those rooms. Right. You know, it, it, it is oftentimes that we may be the only one. Yes. Uh, and other people are looking at us as if we have something to prove when oftentimes we're the most qualified person sitting mm. at the table. Let's just be very real Oh, let's that. say that again. That was so good <laughs> juicy. They looking at us like, we got something to prove, but oftentimes we are the most qualified in the Absolutely. room. Absolutely. I mean, oh, so I mean it's true. Yes. When you look at oh. what it takes for us to be able to break barriers and leap barriers and you compare our accomplishments to the people who are already there, yes. oftentimes it's no comparison, right? right. Uh, but still, we are left with this belief because we are the first or because we're the only or because we're one of few and because we live in a culture that tells us this is really not where we belong mm -hmm. sometimes that small little voice causes us to question ourselves yeah. instead of reaching deep inside and saying I know I belong here mm -hmm. I have paid for this with my labor mm. with my years of sort of study and implementation mm -hmm. and experience and this is exactly where I belong mm -hmm. and, and and not sort of um, sort of uh, consume those sort of limiting uh, perspectives that other people are throwing onto us mm -hmm. and instead saying, I am fully comfortable in my strength, in my power, in my competence, yes. and you just watch. Yes, you just watch what I, you do. Just watch what I do. I love <laughs> that. Yeah, and that does, it takes a lot of internal dialogue and self-talk to find that confidence within yourself. Absolutely. I know even I've struggled with that through my journey of questioning, am I good enough? Why, sometimes even asking, why am I in this room? Like yeah. everybody around me, they're so much smarter or they have these oh, degrees please, or whatever it might be. And you gotta dig really deep to hold your head up high and say, there's a reason I'm in this room. Absolutely, and you raised something that I think is very important that we point out here in terms of the degree situation. Yes. Okay, yes, I have a PhD, mm -hmm. but my father had a second grade education. Wow. He was an extremely successful entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, he was able to employ all of his brothers and about uh, a couple of dozen other people in his community uh, through his wit and his determination mm. and his brilliance, but with just a second grade education. Wow. He was able to create a life for me where I could go to college debt free, built, and pay for by his business. Wow. And through the success of his business, his employees were able to own homes and have successful middle class lifestyles. A business that was started in the Jim Crow South as a black man. Wow. Okay? And so I just want to say that we need not uh, sort of equate degrees with intelligence. Yep. Or Look. wisdom. We, we can just take the microphones off and just go home. Let's just be very yes. real about that. Oh. Believe me, I have met a lot of crazy PhD people. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
can say that with confidence so that that is that not again. an so indicator we, of brilliance, okay? Yes, we do not need to equate the, a degree with intelligence. Absolutely. Yes. With intelligence, wit, um, mm. wisdom, the ability to mm. think on the fly. In fact, sometimes as a PhD holder, I can tell you, that really what they're teaching you is to go a mile deep in one area. Mm. And oftentimes, if you ask someone with that degree specifically, I'm not speaking about others, but with that degree specifically, if you ask them to go one iota out of their area of specialty, they are lost. Yes. They are oh, lost. So, so I, I think it's important that we not let ourselves get intimidated in situations where people have various different credentials that we don't have because I can guarantee you that you are bringing to the table abilities and experiences and intelligences mm. and real world experience mm. that they don't have. Mm. And that's just as valuable as not more valuable. You just spoke into my life. You don't even understand. You just spoke into my life. Like, <laughs> like, And I think that's the importance of being surrounded by women such as yourself who are, number one, walking the talk, you're blazing trails, you're speaking up, you're, you're encouraging and empowering other women to walk in their brilliance. And sometimes you just need to hear it from a different perspective. Yeah. And that was one of the things that they talked about as well at the conference yesterday was making sure that we celebrate women who are already at the table. Yes. So talk about that whole concept of, because sometimes, you know, I, I find some very small circles of women who will support women. Yeah. And maybe I need to just expand my circles. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's that time. But then there are some circles where I see where it's not, it's very, um, in, it's exclusive, not inclusive. Mm -hmm. So talk yeah. about what you've seen as it relates to that and how you kind mm -hmm. of navigate moving beyond that because you're clearly a woman who's on a mission to empower other women. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we've all heard the phrase lifting as we climb. Right. And we really need to take that as our mantra as women. And I, I hear exactly what you're saying. There are some individuals who I believe have a scarcity mindset, mm -hmm. okay? And if you approach life with a scarcity mindset and you reach some level of success, then you are you you have the predisposition then to try to kick the ladder down, mm -hmm. to try to be mm. the only one in the room, right. to try to be the H I T. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes, girl. I do. And so, uh, <laughs> you know that that's what happens when you're in this limited mindset. And instead, what what happens as a result is that. You're, you're not really as respected as you think you are when you're in that space, number wow. one. Number one. And number two, we all don't, aren't able to really celebrate you and support you in a way that you need. Right. Because trust and believe at some point you're going to need somebody else. Yes. Okay? So just from a sort of self-interested standpoint, that's a very stupid position to mm -hmm. take. And then as a sort of uh, collective uh, standpoint, we need each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it really does take teamwork to make the yes. dream work. It, it really does. Yes. And so, you know, I, I, it hurts me when I see this very competitive, sometimes very petty, mm. uh, sometimes just very hateful mm -hmm. dynamic yes. that sometimes can happen yeah. between women. Yes. Instead of, a, and it can happen across generations. I mean, there are di different slices mm -hmm. in which these, uh, these fractures can occur, right? And so uh, what I try to encourage women to do is try to reach out and think with a broad mind uh, with those women around you who you can support and who can help you. You know, mm -hmm. think about what I call the law of reciprocity. Yes. You know, help someone else, help, 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 and then they will want to help you. Absolutely. And together, we can all rise. I love that. And, and I love that I see that you definitely walk the talk as, as it relates to that because I see that you open yourself up to relationships with people and I see that you support other individuals who are on their rise and sometimes I see it and I'm like wow that's really cool like I, this is what I say on my own end from my, <laughs> my laptop I'm like that's really cool that Dr. Avis went and spoke at that event or was at this event or supported this sisters. person I love these that these are my sisters yeah. you know like for example next week I'll be speaking at an event uh, with, sponsored by Black Women's Roundtable. Mm. I'm the editor of the right. um, Black Women in America report every year state of Black Women in the U.S. report and you know I will always love and respect that organization, number mm -hmm. one. They do important work. Mm -hmm. But also at the root of my support of the organization and the important work that they do is my friendship with Melanie Campbell, mm. who is the convener of the Black Women's Roundtable. Mm -hmm. When I started my business, she was my first client. Wow. She was my first client. And I tell you, friendships are important to protect and to revere and to always be there and loyal to that person. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would walk to the ends of the earth for that woman, honestly. Mm -hmm. I respect her so much. That, that's so powerful, and I, and I agree. I'm, I'm big on loyalty and, and being there for the people who were there before you, you know, when you were just a thought. It was exactly. just a thought, right? Exactly. And now you're executing, so yeah, that's very powerful. So 
How can a woman who is on the rise find a mentor, the right mentor ah. or sponsor if she's in the corporate space or uh, or coach, even coach? Yeah. Like how do they connect and find the right, the person who is really the right fit? That's a great question because as I mentioned, you do need that teamwork, right? Yes. And in terms of mentorships, one of the biggest questions that I get around that is because people oftentimes can identify very easily who they want to be their mentor. Yes. It's just how do you get on their radar screen? Yeah. How are you <laughs> able to get them to make time for you? Because here's the thing, when you are seeing someone who is where you want to be eventually and you want to emulate them, Oftentimes, there are a lot of people that see that, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are trying to get on that person's schedule, and that person's schedule is prob probably already pretty full, right? right? Because they're already achieving. Here's my secret sauce that I always tell people. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is figure out how you can help that person. Figure out what sort of assistance that they can need, yeah. that they need. Uh, because when you get on their radar screen by helping them with something that they're doing, you're able to demonstrate your skills to them mm -hmm. in, a, in a very real way. Mm -hmm. They'll be grateful for that, right? And they'll be able to see you in action. They'll be able to see your talents very personally. I like that. And once again, you're tapping into that law of reciprocity. Right. Once you give, give, give to them, they're going to want to help you. They're going to want to open doors for you. They're going to want to have a long-lasting relationship with you. Right. So give first before you even expect to receive. I love that. Do not, and we said this a little while ago with the when we were talking with Nicole, don't come into any relationship with your hand out. Oh, Ask Lord, what, no. I get so many emails <laughs> and inbox messages. Can you be my mentor? Can you this? Oh, yes. Can you help me? Can you let, and it's like, look, you, you can, I mean, you get so many of those. Yeah, right. That it's like when a person actually emails your inbox you and says, I'd like to help you. You're like, whoa, wait, exactly. wait a minute. Huh? And then that's the email or the message you pay attention to because exactly. that's the one that stands out. So I agree absolutely exactly. that that's powerful. You got to come in. And actually, sure that you know, people, exactly. And I'm sorry, but oh, I was just saying also people who take mentoring seriously know that it's a time commitment. Right. So if yes. you, yeah, it's not just, it's not just, oh, be my, yes, it's not, that's really not mentoring. That may be a, a lunch, but that's not mentoring. Yes. So if you're really going to take the time to mentor someone, it is going to be a, an investment of your time. And therefore you cannot, you just physically, you just don't have the, enough hours in the day yeah. to provide that service to everyone that asks. That is so true. So let me ask this other question, and then I want to talk about your book, and I want to talk about your upcoming event, which I'm so upset I can't attend because I'll be in Florida for a mastermind. But I, I was so ready to come to that. I was like, oh, I'm coming. I'm going to be there. <laughs> but I'll actually be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for a mastermind, one of my, my mastermind sessions. But anyway, um, we'll talk about that in a moment. So, so the last question I want to focus on is one of the challenges that I see women of color who are either executives in the corporate space or they're trailblazers in the marketplace is navigating the dynamics of when we show assertion. Oh God. We, when we take a strong stance and, and you on, on TV one, right? You are, you are no joke. You are very <laughs> assertive. You take a stand on what you <laughs> So how do we, you know, what, what is this whole, how do we navigate this dynamic that, oh, if we are expressing a strong stance on something or strong, strong view that we're bitchy or we're combative yeah. or we're an angry black woman. Exactly. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I have a whole section in my book about this, about how, mm. to, how to combat the angry black woman syndrome. And for, the first thing I always like to say whenever I talk about this topic is number one, we are human beings and we are allowed the full range of emotions, mm. number one. Oh, I love that. So, you know, it's not that as black women we should never be angry because there are times when anger is justified. Yes, okay? yes. Uh, however, in professional situations, uh, we have to be very strategic about how we vocalize our frustrations, mm -hmm. particularly given the fact that most of the people that you are probably working with, if they are of another culture, have probably had very limited re um, interactions with real world black women. <laughs> right. And when I say real world black women, I mean, you know, we, let's just be very real. We still grow up in very segregated societies. Yes. We still go to very segregated schools. Yes. So if you're in a, a work situation where you're one of few black women in that space, then the real, really the only interaction with blackness and black women specifically that they probably had is watching, you know, reality TV, mm. which we all know is a caricature of black women. Yes. And so what they do is they project that caricature onto you. Mm. So that even when you're just being professional, even when you're just trying to sort of state a point and you're trying to show ambition, you know, they are... Uh, sort of all of a sudden making you Mimi Leakes. It's right, like crazy. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so understand that's not your problem, that's their problem. That's their problem. Right? But what you need to do is really understand how to, in those moments, um, take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> 
and have a moment to sort of explain to them exactly what the challenge is that you're working for and what you need from them to get it resolved. Mm -hmm. Give them something to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Give, Give them something, something to, to do. do. Yeah. And but I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's powerful that we, we have the right to have a full range of emotions. Absolutely. And that sometimes, yeah, you are angry. But like you said, when you're in the professional space, sometimes it's just taking that deep breath and regrouping and figuring out how you're gonna strategically respond yes. or handle the situation. And you heard it from Dr. Avis herself, give them something to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so talk to us in these last <laughs> few minutes about your book, which I saw that you recently had uh, uh, transcribed into French, yes. I believe it was. Yeah. And uh, talk about that and then talk about the Master the Media Summit that's Absolutely. coming up. Absolutely. So this is really exciting because I actually was transcribed into French about a year ago. It was published oh. uh, in a, with a company in Paris and they've distributed through Francophone Africa and in Haiti. Oh, that and is so, amazing. Yeah. So, I'm so, so a year ago, how am I just finding out? Well, I saw a post, <laughs> I saw a post well, recently. it's because something new just happened recently. So okay. as part of that, it's housed in all of the Francophone African uh, U.S. embassies on wow. the continent. And so I was just contacted by the U.S. Embassy in Abidjan, which is in um, the Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted to have me in, initially they wanted to have me in to do an international book fair around this, and it, it coincided with the dates of my summit. It's something about the dates of my summit. Right. You know, <laughs> right, something about that, right. It's coinciding <laughs> with all these dates. And so, like, you know, I was like, Ugh, any other dates, yes. I would have loved to have done it, but I cannot yes. do it. And then the very next day, they contacted me and said, well, would you, would it be okay? I'm sorry, you can't come to that, but would you consider doing a tour of several African countries around your book and you can mm. we'd like for you to visit both um, francophone and anglophone countries wow. to talk about African women in leadership and I was like yes <laughs> yes <laughs> I will do that <laughs> <laughs> so fantastic. Congratulations. You know Thank my daughter you. goes to a French immersion school. Oh, cool. Did you know that? She's been there since she was in kindergarten, and now oh. she's in the eighth grade, so I she's about her. to go into the high school. Later. Yeah. She absolutely, she speaks and writes uh, fluent, oh, fluently. Awesome. Yeah. So, and, and we've actually visited the French embassy yes. since she's been at the school, and like she's a really good, good, good student. Um, oh so God. I have to I connect to you and talk. Yeah, right. Because, because <laughs> I get, I, sometimes because of the book, sometimes I get emails completely written in French, and I'm like, uh, I don't know what the hell you're saying. And I'm always, when we you. travel, or, Wherever we travel, I'm always listening, and and when I ever I hear somebody live and think that's a French accent, I'm yeah. like, Jana, they talking French, they talking French, and I'm like forcing her to have conversations because I'm like, that's great real world practice that's when so you can important. have those conversations. So I love that. That's such an amazing um, just accomplishment, thank and you. thank you for everything that you do for women, for Black women, and and what you represent for leadership and power. But yet, you I know you you talk about not being this this word humble. Yeah. Like, like, give us that really quickly, the yeah. overview, because you did this a uh, LinkedIn, and you talked about that word humble. Yeah, I'll be super quick about it. So I did this LinkedIn, and it's kind of a little viral, around how being humble might be holding you back. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something about us culturally. Mm -hmm. As black women, we, we believe that we need to be modest. We need to be a little humble. As I mentioned, we do work all the different time. Yeah. So it's like we don't want to be very vocal about hey, I'm the reason why that project took off. I'm right. the reason why. And um, so what, what I su suggest is that if we make that a habit, then it creates these spaces where somebody's going to take credit for that work. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why you're continually leapfrogged over at work, that might be one aspect of it, that your work has been rendered invisible because other people are taking credit for Ooh. it. You got to come back. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope that you will agree to come back Absolutely. and we'll give you like a whole hour segment because this is just juicy stuff that you're sharing. Um, can you talk about the Master of the Media Summit and, yes. and the dates of that and how people can find out more information? Absolutely. I'm so super excited about this. So Me too. Is, uh, and I saw this morning you posted somebody else <laughs> yes. going to be there. I was like, oh. I'm super excited. Yes. So, um, yeah, so it's May 18th through the 20th in Arlington, Virginia, so just mm. outside Washington, D.C., uh, and it is a three-day event where we're going to really go into depth with helping people understand how to acquire and rock media appearances on television, on radio, on podcasts, get published on major platforms both nationally and internationally wow. so that they can take their messages to the masses. Did I mention I'm getting angrier as I said, hey, I like that. I can't be there. Like, you don't understand. Like, I was going to buy my ticket. And I'm like, oh, man, we're booked to go to Florida. But anyway, but I know it's going to be amazing. It's going to be phenomenal. You, you're collaborating with some phenomenal women yes. who are industry experts. So you guys, make sure you go to that website again, which is masterthemediasummit.com. There you go. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to close out with these final few little statements that you can finish in your own words. So number one, in order to soar as a woman of color, you must know your history and know what you want for your future. Mm, powerful. The most important characteristic of a successful woman of color is confidence. confidence. 
And your legacy is determined by? Mm. The number of people that you bring with you. Mm. I just love you. I, I just, everybody, y'all just make me want to just <laughs> burst out. And I'm like, come get it together, Cheryl, get it together. Just powerful. And it's just so, uh, so wonderful to, be, to sit in a space with you and to kind of rub shoulders with you and Absolutely. just to hear you speak about what your heart's passion is. I think that when you're in that space with anyone, it, it's just, it's transformational. So um, we're giving all of our guests this month our service award medal, which I forgot oh. to present uh, on the air to Nicole before she left, but I did get it, give it to her. And we got your name on the back How of it. Cool is that? And it's just for all the service that you do and how you're supporting so women, especially sweet. women of color. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. How can people connect with you either on your website yeah. or on social media? Absolutely. So on my website, you can just go to avisjonesdeweaver.com. Probably the best place to connect with me on social media. I'll just say LinkedIn, where I'm LinkedIn. Avis Jones Deweaver, PhD. You heard it. So we're going to take a, a, just a one-minute break. We will be right back with our final guest, Miss Arsha Jones. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have powerful words. We have powerful minds. We use our voices and freedom takes flight. And we're ready to work. We're ready to win. We have a strategy and now we can begin. We are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is over. That you are a champion. God is my witness. Imperfect perfection. Living my mission and winning. See, we are influencers. We have fear, but don't stop. I have the confidence to rise to the top. We are standing bolder. Shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is, playtime is, playtime is over. Mission. Yes, I'm on a mission. I'll win. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, listen, I want y'all to repeat after me, okay? Because we're going to make some declarations in here today. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see you say. I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see me say, oh, say I'm building my legacy for the whole world to see me Hey, we are back uh, to close out our final 20, 25 minutes of the show. We have another phenomenal guest who's here with me. Miss Arsha Jones. And again, if you don't know these ladies, you need to Google them. They are all Googlicious, right? <laughs> you can Google them and find out all about their brands and the amazing work that they're doing in the world. So Arsha Jones is a creative soul with a penchant for marketing, sales, pop culture, technology, and social media. She is multifaceted, let's just say that. As an emerging leader in the e-commerce industry, she has built multiple million dollar brands that have been featured in or on media outlet outlets such as BuzzFeed, the Washington Post, Black Enterprise, Fox, CBS, and TV One. Her website, buildbrandlaunch.com, is where she endeavors to teach others how to turn their passions into profit with physical products. When not building her e-commerce empire, I love this part that you added this in your bio, you can find Arsha spending time with her husband and her children, enjoying a juicy nap. She called it juicy, y'all. A juicy nap or a delicious bowl of ice cream. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's so good to see you. I think the last time I saw you was at the Playtime is Over conference. Yes, yes, yes. A, and a, a years, ago, years ago. Yeah, I was yeah. Say. And you just moving and shaking. Yeah, and I know. It's a, it's a lot been going on since then. A so. lot. So you have yeah. this brand, and I don't know if it's new or not. I just mm -hmm. know that you get a lot of engagement <laughs> on the brand page on Facebook yeah. called Brand, brand yeah. Build, build Launch. launch yes. Or is it, wait a minute, is it Brand Build Launch or Build Brand Launch? It's Brand Build Launch. Okay, Brand Build Launch. And that's the website as well? 
Yes. Okay. So brandbuildlaunch.com. Yes. So tell us, how did you start this, and how are you tapping to your, you know, your amazing, unique gifts through this sure, business? Sure. Sure. Um, well, originally it started off as a blog, and okay. it was called brandbuildsale.com, mm. and it was a place. Since I'm a traditionally trained um, web designer, it was really just a place for me to kind of dump all of my ideas about how to get started putting up a blog, mm -hmm. because you know, at, at one point in time, kind of that was the route that everybody was going, yes, and they wanted so to true. know how to buy domains and set up websites and buy themes and I just really gave them a starting point on which they could find all resources on how to get started. Mm -hmm. Now as my own personal brands, my own personal e-commerce brand started to kind of move forward, the blog then transitioned on a way where I could help others um, do the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I mostly know you for the mumbo sauce. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm just saying I like chicken wings yeah. and mumbo sauce. So <laughs> talk to us about is that brand still? I know it's still thriving because I yeah. go to the, I go to the local shoppers and it's in there all the time. But like, that go, I know the lady that I'm yeah. trying to tell people. I uh, know her. <laughs> they be like, what? What? They right, pray, right. Pray, but I just get excited to uh -huh. see that your product is placed yeah, in a yeah. storefront. Yeah. So so tell us a little bit about how that launched and kind of where where that is now and how you can help other people to get to that place where they're kind of creating, um, getting their products placed. Sure, sure. Now, um, that one kind of started just um, out of a simple need. Mm -hmm. um, we moved, um, I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., so I kind of grew up eating the sauce, and um, it was just a part of life. Like. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as we moved further, um, as I got married and had kids, and we kind of moved further into suburbs of Maryland, we still, could get, we still couldn't really get access to it like we used to, because mm -hmm. it was at local carryouts, you know right, how that goes. Right. And so I just, um, traveling around to the ones that I loved, I learned how to make the product, and I just started, I just said to myself one day, what if there are other people like me who've moved away from the DC, Was the um, Washington DC area, mm -hmm. and would love to get this product too? But like we were thinking, okay, Charlotte, Atlanta, right. you know, people who um, several members who were um, um, in Afghanistan at the time, and it never even dawned on us that we should offer this product locally because I figured, hey, well, I mean, you've you been, you, you know, you right. get at the carry out, you right. just keep going there, <laughs> <laughs> and so people, but people kept asking. They were wow. like, well, the places in our area doesn't taste good. At least we know what yours tastes like. Yeah. So that was one of the things that we wanted to create was a sense of consistency, mm -hmm. so that at least when you got our product, you always know knew what it exactly. would taste like. Yeah. Um, and then also the um, the the health issue behind it, knowing what's in it, knowing the sugar content, mm. knowing the appropriate amounts to eat, and then also being able to use it on different things. Because when you get it in the local restaurant, it just comes. I'm ready to eat. Um, right. So yeah. So that was a thing. And so our journey to here just started really out of our home. We started making it by hand, like literally one bottle at a time. <laughs> Stir it up in the pot, yeah, make it one at a time. cooking in the kitchen. And, uh, <laughs> and um, it grew It grew from there. Um, as, as people, as the, the, as the demand grew, we figure out how to get the product into the hands of the customers that wanted it. So is it as difficult of a process as someone would think? So if someone has a great product, mm -hmm. I don't care if it's soap, I don't care if it's uh, whatever, shampoo or mumbo sauce. Right, right. Is it really it's not difficult of a process. What it is, it's an expensive process, uh. and much like um, many other businesses, it's a heavily driven community process, meaning if you don't market it, it won't sell, mm -hmm. you know? And at the end of the day, when you get your products on store shelves, the stores just want to know it's going to sell. You know, yeah. it's going to sell or it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so I think when people, the hurdles that people um, come the, the hurdles that people uh, come across when they try to do stuff like this is really those two things, the money aspect mm. and then how to market it properly. Because like most businesses or um, you get so caught up in the thing, making the thing, mm -hmm. whether it's um, the content, whether it's the speaking, whether it's whatever, that you don't always see the big picture of everything that comes with trying to take this product to the next level, which mm -hmm. is the processes, the money, and the marketing. Yeah. You know, and that's essential for any small business. That's it doesn't true. matter if it's a product on the store shelf or your um, or your product is yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's it's really um, the, those same key things that you need to be able to see your product like come to fruition yeah so you talk about the money and I know that one of the big <laughs> challenges for women especially yes women in business is access to capital yes so are there certain resources that people can tap into or what what would be your recommendation for someone who has a product and they have this big dream mm -hmm. you know you know yeah, and you yeah. know how it is before you get to the big dream yes. and you just like oh Lord you praying yeah you just yeah. like I just want I just want I just want and mm -hmm. you don't even know how to get there like where should somebody even start to, to 
gain access to the Capitol yeah. in order to move forward at all with the vision? Um, well, I know there are a lot of um, opportunities, especially locally, mm -hmm. um, with uh, grant opportunities and things like that. However, I didn't come from that place. So I'm right. going to speak from a position <laughs> of I ain't have nothing. Right. Okay. <laughs> And plus a lot of these um, grants and things, they, they require so much of your time yeah. that it actually takes you away from building the business that you wanted to build, mm -hmm. you know? So it may tell you, if it takes you, um, you know, three months of working on this grant process and you get $6,000, well, that's three months you've actually taken away from building your own business. Yes. So what I did was I just started from where I was and what I had. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was about $100. <laughs> you better speak yeah. it, too, girl. You better speak it. You know, I definitely started I believe in a lean budget I believe in starting where you are I believe in um, the power of Google because uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we didn't have any direction we didn't have any mentorship we didn't even really know kind of what any of that meant so really starting from buying the domain setting up the website it was really all me trying to figure out from free resources on how to get this started yeah. and you can yeah. what you have to have is the drive and determination yes. with some real, real um, realistic goals set with timelines um, attached to I love to that you said that. I, <laughs> I love that you share that truth because everybody doesn't take the same route. And yes. some people might, you know, like you said, you might, okay, if you invest the time into grants, that's fine. Yes. Or if you have the money sitting there, to, to yeah, that's fine, that's fine too. too. But everybody don't start there. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I love that because that is, that really resonates with me because I was the same way. I didn't yeah. have money to invest thousands of yeah. dollars into yeah. coaches yeah. and figure out how Correct. the speaking thing. I just got out and did it. Yeah, you just I was start. like, you going to know who I am. Well, you going to yeah. know me. You don't yeah. know me yet. Yeah. But you about to know. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's the same thing. Up. Yeah. Yep, it's the same thing. You kept showing up and um, and then eventually it starts to kind of all happen. And then yeah. once it hits, it comes so fast that you're like, wow, this is all this is happening so fast. And you might have been doing it for six or seven years by right. then. Right, right. <laughs> and you feel like all of a sudden, but it ain't yeah, been all, it's of really a sudden. Not all of a sudden. So, so then talk about that. How do you... <laughs> How do you navigate that of, because sometimes we do, we have our head down and we're grinding and we're grinding yeah. and we're like, I'm always going to be grinding, but then we wake up and like, oh snap, I'm there. How do you keep up with the progressive demand once you kind of woke up and was like, oh my God, people really want this thing. Yes, yes, yes. We're not uh, grinding to get there no more. We're <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. Um, well, what happened uh, with us is just having a team, okay? Mm. Because one thing I'm really great at is I'm a great visionary. I'm great when it comes to ideas. I'm great when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. And I'm great when it comes to leadership. What I am not great in is um, operations yeah. and sustainability. So things that have to happen for the business to be um, consistently sustainable and profitable on a daily basis like that's just that's over my head. Fine. Like I get, I get, I lose focus. I can't concentrate. Right. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> I get bored easily. You know, I just, I can't keep up. So what I did was, I, my husband is really great at that stuff, mm. and so that's kind of why how we partner together is that he keeps the business running on a daily basis, and then I focus on the gr the growth, the mm. leadership, and mm -hmm. moving forward. I love that. So that means you have to sit in a space and identify what are your strengths, exactly. Kind of what are your limitations? Almost like going through a SWOT analysis. What's your strengths? It, what's your weak? What's your weaknesses? Yeah, those yeah, are yeah. internal, and then what's your threats, and what's the opportunity? Yeah, because and you have to know and be honest. You you have to be know and be honest, mm -hmm. and then you also have to just hire against those weaknesses. Yeah. And so even if you don't have someone like me, who's my husband, is the complete opposite of me, mm -hmm. then that means that you have to go out and actually seek these people yes. um, to help you build your business. Because one thing it is, it's hard for people to change what naturally, um, how they naturally are. Mm -hmm. So um, while I can work, and from now into the day I die, on being a person who's great at sustainability, I may never achieve that yeah. type of organization um, um, processes and, and thoughts yes. that comes naturally to my husband. So yes. like, why fight it? Right. You know? I love like, that. Yeah. <laughs> like, just play in your lane. Just, play yep. in and stay in your lane. <laughs> I'm like, good over here exactly. and he's good over there. <laughs> yeah. And that means you have to be open to other people coming in and being a part and bringing yes. their strengths into the business. Yes. Now, yes. is that hard? Um, to a certain extent it is mm -hmm. because um, as a leader you just you want to have a lot of control yeah um, what you have to do <laughs> is you have to let some of that go and know that while they may not do things exactly the way you That's it. think things should be done what you do is you come up with a goal at the end and as long as that person gets to that same goal and yeah. that same timeline yeah. then don't worry about the process in which it took them to get there that is so true because what, what's that saying oh if you want it if I want it done right I got to do it myself no yeah. no no if no. you want it done the way you yeah, want it 
you want to do it yourself. That's what I was going to say. But it can still be accomplished <laughs> when you get to the yes, end goal. Yes, yeah, then you want it done your way. Yes, yes. do it yourself. So, so teamwork <laughs> is so important, especially if you want to grow the brand, yes. grow the business. Like, you cannot stay a one-woman show or you a one-person show. You cannot. You are never going to get but so far just on your own. That's why I don't matter what business it is. That's if correct. If it's a product, if it's a service-based business, it doesn't matter. That's correct. You need people who can then tap into their talents and their strengths and bring that to a part That's of the correct. brand. So talk about a little bit more about the um, the marketing piece because you okay. said you're like a marketing guru. Yeah. People always ask that question. Well, I'm like, a guru, but like, I'm a little Girl, you a guru. You can embrace that. <laughs> we call her the guru today. How do people um, market themselves? Because some people, number one, struggle with self-promotion. Yes. And they, especially women, yeah. I don't know what that yeah. is. Like, yeah. we're like yeah. afraid to say when I did something. That's what we were yeah. having yeah. a conversation yeah. with yeah. Dr. Avis. We're, we're scared to take credit for what we've yes, done. Yes, 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 um, yes. So the self-promotion I find is hard. Yeah, and then yeah. I think a lot of times uh, women in business are questioning, well, where do I market? Like, yeah. where do I spend my marketing yeah. dollars? Yeah. Or where do I spend yeah. my time yeah. networking to market mm -hmm, myself? Mm -hmm. So um, the first question is for, since I sell a tangible product mm -hmm. that is like something you use, yeah. it's a little easier for me because I don't actually have to sell myself. Yeah. You know, I can sell, I don't have to be, I'm not the face of any of my products. And right. so what happens is that it's, a certain level of separation that comes in mm. between. So I can be someone else. Like, mm -hmm. so I can be someone else online. I'm not being Arsha. I'm just, I'm being Capital City, right. you know? And so there's, there's a line. Right. Um, so I, so, because I definitely, I, I, I run into those same issues too of running to promote myself. But when it's not me, it's not me. Right. So like I can, so I can take a little um, um, bigger chances on um, advertising that I normally wouldn't. Mm. Um, so I can, um, several things that we do, we reach out to, um, local influencers we reach out to non-local influencers like we just um, finished up some um, video advertising with Kim Coles from uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Living Single yeah. and so then we also do Instagram ads Facebook ads um, you know email marketing which is heavy and you know that yes. and so um, so uh, really everything, everything and yeah. that and that has really um, propelled our business uh, further than what most people would be able to do so you got to put some skin in the game. Yeah. I think that's just so important to say. Like, you, you're not going to get something for nothing. That's correct. And like you said, you're investing in the Facebook ads and the Instagram ads and correct. going out and connecting with other influencers. That's so correct. you're either spending time or you're spending money yes. or you're spending both. Yes. And you can't get around that. Like, <laughs> you that's what marketing you requires. You and if you don't have a, some type of look, nowadays, if you don't have some type of digital footprint, yes. you are you are screwed for business. Yeah, yeah, um, very much so. Because people, um, um, regardless of whether they are um, conference. Um, event planners or retail buyers, they want to know that you come with an audience already. Yeah. You come with customers already um, yeah. because they want to add to what they have already built. They don't want to be you to be a crutch for them and them to do all the work. Again. So having that social proof yes. and to show that you have customers, people who are looking for your product, whether you're, like I said, whether your product is a tangible item that you can buy mm -hmm. or a speaker, that you come with a certain level of interest already that yeah. they can add to what they've already built. Right. So again, like in the conversations we've been having today, not coming in with your hand out. You're yes. coming with something. Yes. You're coming with value so that you can connect and create greater value. Yes. So I think that's important. So let me ask you this question. So let's say someone is a service-based business right now, sure. but they really, they want to create something in the marketplace yes. that is a tangible product. Where, where would they start even figuring out what they should create? Um, it depends. It depends. Now, um, if they want to create something that is specially, um, especially geared toward their audience that they've already built yes. um, for their service, they should really start with polling their audience. Mm. Say, what would you like to buy? Mm. You know, so like if you're a speaker, I'm just using your example because yeah. since you're here. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're me. You're me. <laughs> yeah, you're so, me. <laughs> so, um, so like example, they, you might say, well, um, people who um, are, have a, um, want to, uh, want to start speaking, you poll your audience and they say, well, I want a, I want a startup kit, okay? I want a startup kit with all the tools that I will need mm -hmm. that I could um, that I could get started with speaking. Right. So that may be some type of journal where they write down um, weekly ideas, mm -hmm. um, who they're pitching. Um, it might come with a, um, let's say, a list of leads in terms of conferences. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one kit mm -hmm. that you come up with that, they, that you would sell. So first is polling and seeing what people want. Like, yeah. don't go out here and just sit in your bedroom oh, Lord, yes. thinking about what I want to make. Yes. Consider and then, and spend a whole lot of time creating exactly, something nobody gonna buy. Exactly. Consider. <laughs> 
polling your audience first yeah. or even polling your friends to say what would you like to buy mm -hmm. you know really get a feel about what's out there and what your people want that is such I mean that's probably the best piece of advice you can get guys is <laughs> poll your audience yeah Stop creating stuff. I'll never forget when I first started in business girl I spent all of this time, I created this 250-page workbook that ain't nobody buy. Cause I didn't poll nobody, ask ain't nobody. No, you just I, like, yeah, that's a good that's idea. That's a good idea. Like, stop thinking your idea good. And ask the people yes, what they yes, want. Yes, that's the yes, best thing yes. to do. This is such a great conversation. Uh -huh. I'm so happy for you and so Thank proud you. of everything Thank that you. you're accomplishing. Just like just starting from the ground up yeah, and just building yeah, and building yeah. and learning and growing. So, how can people connect with you um, on social media and if sure, they want to sure. learn more about? Are you, do you do classes and things like I that? I do. I do. Um, we do um, limited workshops, and mm -hmm. it's really e-commerce based. So okay. people who want to um, launch online stores or sell in retail, uh, and uh, so we do that kind of stuff. If okay. you if you want to find me, you can find me at uh, I have a Facebook group mm -hmm. on yes, um, she does. and it's called Brand Build Launch with Arsha Jones, and it's just it's a real lively group. Yeah, it um, is. Of it most, is. <laughs> I love that. And we talk about all kinds of business, e-commerce, service based. It doesn't matter. And we just really I have built it to be a very supportive place. Yeah. Um, there's a zero tolerance for foolishness you come in there for um you come in there to get help yeah and to be surrounded by people who look like you sound like you and have real life experiences similar to yours i love it so again it's, it's brand bill launch with arsha jones, with arsha on jones. that's on facebook and then if they want to find out about the workshops and things like yeah, that they'll be all in there okay so everything is there you yeah. can just go yeah. i love that one stop shop <laughs> just go there now if they want to get their hands on some of this mumbo sauce <laughs> what do they do just go to the video is there a website yeah yeah, yeah. you can go to a shop cap CapitalCity.com, and that's if you're online, and we ship, um, we ship right of our warehouse, right out of our warehouse in Maryland. Um, but if you're local to the Washington D.C. area, we are in about 350 stores. Wow! Um, so all the major ones we're in around better. here. Go, girl! <laughs> Thank you, you better work. I told you every time I go into shoppers, I be screaming, <laughs> and I go like every other day because I'm on this new little uh -huh, diet thing. So I'm eating all these vegetables. Okay. I'm at the store every other day, and you would act like I, you would think I ain't never seen a mumbo sauce on the shelf before. Yeah, no, and I every get time it. I go, I, I trust me. I get, get I, so excited. I, I get excited too, and since I'm a little further out, I just recently saw it in our local Safeway. Yes, and I took a picture. I'm like, okay, right, right. I'm gonna take a picture the next time. <laughs> okay, and I thought about taking a picture, but I was like, she's so busy, she's going to have time yeah, to look at my little I get, I get a kick out of it because it's so, it's so surreal, yes. almost. You know, you work and yeah. work and work, and finally it is manifested, and it that's is. a beautiful thing. And and it's a beautiful thing when we can cheer for our other yes, sisters yes, who yes. are winning big. Yes, and you yes, are winning yes. big. I'm Thank so you. Excited. I appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna close out with these final statements. You finish the statement. You cannot build a thriving, profitable brand without? Without a team. All without right, a team. without a team. Mm -hmm. To achieve the life of your dreams, you must be willing to? Uh, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as you're grinding for your next, don't ever forget? Uh, don't ever forget about the process that it took to get you there. Yeah. Because I think so a lot of times people get so focused on the end goal, yeah. but they don't realize that the fun part is in the, how you got there. It like is. all my best stories about what happened, it happened so in the process. True, you know, because so then, then once you're there, you're like, okay. 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 <laughs> I'm here. Right. Right. But, yeah. but like the fun part is all the things that honestly oh, went wrong so <laughs> on the way there. Those you know? The <laughs> juiciest <laughs> stories. <laughs> the stories yeah. when you cried, you <laughs> yeah. laughed. You thought it was going to be over, and you got back you up. Were, and you were done. You was like, yes, forget this. Yes, I am over it. Yes. Can we get a job? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Let me go back and get the rectified. Yes. Everybody. Yes. Uh -uh. Oh, my God. Such great stuff. This is just real talk. Truth. I love it. Thank you for being uh, no here. No problem. I know that you're such a busy woman, and, and no thank problem. you for saying yes to coming and sharing with our tribe oh, no and our problem. audience. <laughs> Guys, make sure that you connect with her at Brand Build Launch with Arsha Jones on Facebook. Uh -huh. The group is a very robust, friendly uh -huh. group. Yes. And they, they are willing to share and give advice and guidance. Yes, so yes. you want to make sure you connect. This has been a phenomenal show. <laughs> thank you to all of you guys who stuck with us on Facebook Live. We've had such a great group the whole show. I know you guys could only see like half my face the whole time, but it's okay. <laughs> I didn't matter. The guests matter. Yeah. And thank you for those of you who tuned in through VoxWave.com and for those of you who called in. We will be here again next Wednesday, same time, same place. And let me tell you who's going to be joining us. Ashley Tuck 
who is an international travel expert, will be with us. Jennifer Lucy Tyler, you know her, mm -hmm. who's a millionaire businesswoman. Uh, Patricia McDougal, who is, I call her the photographer extraordinaire, okay. who, I mean, she takes photos at every major event, the, the woman's, mar everything, she's there. And Latasha Briscoe, who is an event and floral designer. So we will see you here next Wednesday from 12 to 2. Thanks so much for being with us, guys. Bye. Bye. We have powerful words, we have powerful minds, we use our voices and freedom takes flight, and we're ready to work, we're ready to win, we have a strategy and now we can begin, we are standing bolder, shoulder to shoulder, playtime is over. Time is over. Now you are a champion. God is my witness. Imperfect perfection. Living my mission and winning. See, we are influencers. We have fear, but don't stop. I have the confidence to rise to the top. We are standing bolder. Shoulder to shoulder. Playtime is over. Playtime is, playtime is, playtime is over All I need is inside of me I am enough and now I see yeah. I will reach my destiny yeah. I don't need your permission Yes, I'm on a mission, I'll win I want y'all to repeat after me, okay? Because we're going to make some declarations in here today. Here we go. One, two.